Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. here let's put that starting soon <laughs> my name's in lights <laughs> this the setup this is the same setup as this look my my earphones are on my ears oh look i got look 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 there we got more we got more money we got more for the monitor we got more what's 28 percent of 300 i don't know I mean, like, it's not all going to be 300 Like, I'm going to get a little mounting arm, too. So that's usually, like, 50 bucks. Let me get, uh, where's a, where's a guitar pick I can use? It fell on the ground as they, as they want to do. Where the heck is? Oh, my God. I can't find it. Ugh. Walking precariously over all the crap in my room. I was wondering why I couldn't hear my guitars because I don't even I don't even have my earplugs for the guitar in. <laughs> it's like why can't I hear? I'm so stupid. I'm so stupid. Okay, let's get this in. I'm gonna play guitar for a bit because I feel like it. Real guitar, yeah, it's real. It's an Ivanez S something. What do you mean by fake guitar? I don't get it. I don't get it. What do you mean by fake guitar? <laughs> Ah! 
something just fell. Because <laughs> of all my wires. <laughs> Too many wires! for that. I've been trying to download something in, in the background. Put the bunny back in the box. I really need to get into some new sound clips, huh? <laughs> That's the only one I found that had, um, that had, um, bunnies in them. And Peppy Popa, hello! Wonderful to see you! Wonderful to see you! I read gr the green word in the text at the same time as, as I was saying see. So I said seen. My voice is no good today. Let me see. I try to the why. Feeling inside me says the time I was gone. Little head, like the head. I know that something is real and it's not. Fly by night away from here. Free my heart again. Fly by night, goodbye, my dear. Feeling inside me says Oh yeah, I have to I have to put one ear out, see? So I have to put one ear so I can actually hear myself. So anyways, okay, this is some jamming, but um today I was planning on doing a pretty big lesson. Pretty big lesson on um more theory stuff. I've been talking a lot about a major scale, but I'm gonna go back to the chromatic scale too. So that's all the notes. Oh my God. Whatever, all, all the notes. Ah! I thought that was a bug, but it was just my other earphone on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> um, so <laughs> Oh, we're out of tune a little bit. What, what, what? So it's easy to tune your guitar. Oh, that one's way off. Those 
those are pretty good. I guess it's just these ones that are a little off. Let's see. It's even more off. Maybe it's too sharp. That's a little better. That's how you can tell Tony. Yeah, I'm just jamming around a bit, but we'll be playing more piano this time. I have some lessons, ideas, a bunch of ideas I want to try. So um, another idea I had was that, like, there's tuning programs, right? So if you play, like, you know, oh, you got to tune your guitar to B or whatever, all these different notes. And I'll tell you what pitch you're doing. So all I really need is a pitch detection program for my guitar. And it'll be able to tell me, like, well, oh, I, I can play a note and it'll tell you guys, yeah, that's an A, it's an A4 note, guys. None of those were A4 notes. This is garbage. Let's put this guitar. Oh, shredding. making no sound. It's such a cool sound.
amazing grace. Okay. Oh, I'm getting too hot. Oh, it's playing electric guitar. It always makes me sweat too much. Okay. Ah. Oh, let's get all these earplugs out and wires everywhere. Oh god, I got tangled up. I got tangled up. What do I do? Uh. Okay. So, fellas, I have a bunch of ideas planned. Oh, that's probably not a good idea. Ugh. Sorry if there was some feedback noise. Oh, Jimi Hendrix wept. Oh, I'm too hot. I'm too hot. Okay. <laughs> I was fanning my, my big uh, shirt. Shirt. I got like those shirts that are like down to like your knees. Um. Ugh. God, there's more shit on my on my on my floor. <laughs> I'm so sorry for the feedback. I should I should have muted it first. It's my mistake. Okay, so fellas, uh, in the past few weeks, we've been going over some musical topics, some things like major scale. We've touched on some other things like modes and different chords and what terminologies are. But we're gonna go a little. You know, we've been stretching a little uh, past past like um um. A little bit past the intro, but still, like we need some more foundations to go over um, some future some future details. Um, <laughs> I'm seeing some uh, some replies to my thing tweet. Hold your horses. <laughs> Watch Minmon or play Armored Core. I do both. Um, oh God, I don't think I, I answered those questions. If people had the Q and A before, let, let me see if I could find that Q. And A. Let's see if I can find Q and A from in modulation. No, I can't. I can't see it. Anyways, all those questions. Oh, what if I had more? What if I have one monitor? What if I had more than one monitor? That would be great. I'm so cramped. I have so many things going on. Um. Oh yeah, the intro song was a commission song I did like two years ago for a small a small YouTuber. It's called ha Haunted Toast on my on my on my SoundCloud. I love the song is really cute. It's like chords with it um oh yeah i tried to bring this other microphone a little closer um have you ever played katamari i know but i have watched my friends play katamari that's sort of the same thing right that's sort of the same thing oh thank you octava that was just a little a little uh, synth idea yeah i had i like it because like the first the first time i do these chords so this is this G major to F major, but then the second time I do this, it's a little delayed, so I hit this note in the middle, right? It's not, it could have went from G to F, but instead I do G to, you know, this one in the middle, uh, not quite yet, then I do it, then I finish with like, da, 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 da. So if you do this sort of thing, up to the up to the your home chord, it just sounds really cool. It sounds triumphant.
Dax XL. So I wanted to do like a full, a full like. I wasn't planning on, but I just, I just feel good. I just like playing the piano, even though I'm not, I'm a little clumsy. So, I guess the big question, I'll, I'll start this little uh, music. Oh, oh, my camera. Oh, let's reset the camera. Hello, hello. With camera, camera. There we go. Okay. <laughs> um, I guess I'll start this little lecture, musical lecture. We'll do this for a little bit. Um, has anyone ever wondered how to write a song? How do you write a piece of music? How do you write a song? How do you write a melody? What? How do you possibly do it? What? How can you possibly do it? What? What? What goes into it? So who here? Who here has has ever wondered? Has ever wondered how they do it? With pen and paper. You have. You, sir. You good, sir. You have wondered. You, too. You have wondered. You have all wondered. How do they do it? How do these magicians of sound and instruments make these songs sound so good? Sound so nice. I just tap things out because rhythms have made my mind. Rhythms are all part of music as well. And I'll go into that as well. I touched on a little bit of last time. So we are going to be analyzing... Green Greens by Kirby. By Kirby. <laughs> Let's, uh, <laughs> Kirby compose. Let's get the actual names. Jun Ishikawa and Hirokazu Ando. They've both been working together since the very first Kirby's Dreamland. And they were always freaking amazing. Incredible, incredible, incredible. So, we're just going to do a little demonstration of the song first, and then we'll go into the um the the different tools they do they made they made it just like a painting you see well what color paints did they use what canvas did they use what like what in, what was their inspiration how did they uh did they sketch it out beforehand in pencil and then paint over it that sort of thing you know same thing we're gonna do with with thing Kirby cannot hold any kind of writing implement, so I doubt it. <laughs> Kirby is a musician in his spare time. Yeah, he does the mic where he just screams in the mic. That's like, he he, he does scream out. I just tap things out. Okay, so the song starts like this. That's a little intro. Oh my god, this bullshit. Ba -ba -ba. <laughs> Can't believe this is interrupting me. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Mm 
<laughs> oh, amazing! Marissa Doom, thank you! So the, even that little, that little thing, so... Duh, 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 duh. This will help us learn green greens as well. So, um... Here we go. So the first chords start like this. So it does a little, these three different chords. So we're gonna do like, we call it chords because dun, dun, nothing's really changing. And then it does something like this. Music is like music to my ears. I know, same. That's why I love it so much. I wish I could get this microphone in a little closer, but there's no room in my freaking... That's a problem, you know? You don't have enough room. You always think, uh, I have enough room, and you don't. Uh, ba -ba -ba. These are the first three chords before the melody even comes in. Then the melody goes like this. Obviously. Oh my god, I was like contorted and so I was like doing some exorcism stuff right there. Minma is absolutely not wearing those headphones. Ha <laughs> ha! Uh. play for hours like that oh my god um maybe I should just put my let's try to maybe I can move my keyboard so it's actually in front of me so I'm not constantly turning to the side that would be useful <laughs> oh there goes another thing on the ground a <laughs> clothes hanger I forgot to put it away uh. oh that's hitting the radiator There we go. So I won't be able to type very well, but at least the piano will be in front of me now. Okay. Oh, this is so different. That bitch ain't listening to that. Oh, I shouldn't swear, right? <laughs> Oh god, I can't put my legs anywhere. Where did I put my legs? Why is this all weird? Oh my god. Anyways. Okay, so I'm getting off track. I keep on playing piano because I just love playing piano so much. Um, so, so we have a green greens. The intro is these. It's these two chords. So this is D F A G B D. So let's write those down. Mini is bunny ears for headphones. <laughs> 
Um, let's write these down on our highlighter program. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Highlighter, there we go. So our first three chords, we're playing... So all we need to do is write down all these notes that we're playing. C. So the C chord is going to be C, E, and G. So we're playing, obviously, we can see the C there, we can see the E, and we can see the G. We're not playing anything, at, like, these are all the same notes, they're just repeated, right? Even if we play it up here, or we play it down here, or we play it down here, it doesn't matter where we play it, we're still just playing these same three pitches, C, E, and G. And the pitches are always like, this is twice as much frequency as the other. So that's why they, they go together well. Just like tuning a, a guitar. That's why tuning a guitar is important, because you're making sure all the pitches sound the same like this on all the different strings. They're higher strings, so they got to sound the same like this, right? Um, the G, E, C chord. <laughs> and then um, D chord. So the second chord we're playing is this chord. So how do I know that? I don't even know what, like, what chord. Why is this? Why is this a different chord? Well, let's just write the notes down first. D, F, D, F, A, D, F, A. So we can just tell that's D, F, A. And then the next chord is G, chord, G, B, and D. Okay, B and D. So let's put that all together. C, E, G. D, F, A, G, B, D. Oh, that's a whole bunch of letters. There's a whole bunch of numbers. So what I like to do is I put them in order. So let's put them in order with no repeats. Let's get of all repeats first. So G, G. So we already have a G, so we'll get rid of the G. We already have a, um, a D, so we'll get rid of the B. Okay, now let's put them in order. So C, we have a D. We have the E there. We have the F. We have the G. Oh, we have the F, we have the G there, we have a A, and we have a B. So what is it? C, D, E, F, G, A, B. That's just a, that's a C major chord. That's a C major scale. Oh my god, you can't see it. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is a bit of an unprofessional stream. Let's let Kirby dancing. I'm afraid you'll have to Kirby dance bracket one. That's what I have it as. Sorry. If you had a hundred of them, you can make some hyper pop. Yes. I'm sorry. No, no, Hanukkah, Hanukkah is still good. Hanukkah is still good. You're safe. Nyan, 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 nyan. Um, <laughs> so, if we have all these, all these, all these things, all these chords, still just make up seven unique notes. So if we just get rid of these notes. It's still just all these notes. And as we've gone through series, let me know us, uh, all these, all these white key notes. These make up the major scale. Do, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. So, um, just from the first three chords, we've played every single one of the notes of the C major scale. Now, how do we get the melody? Where does this melody come from? Well, um, like, how, uh, like, how do we know not to, how do we pull to play these notes and not just any random notes to make a melody? How come these melody notes sound like good? How about, like... Like, why, why not those notes? Well, let's look at our chords again. Um... You're doing chords one by one, eh? Yeah. It's important to look, to, to be very um, conscious of what you're actually playing. All my, my whole thing about music is like, you should know what you're playing. <laughs> it's um, be very conscious of like, what chord you're playing, what notes you're playing in them, and every note has its own special color. We'll go into all the different note names in uh, later in the lesson, if anyone's interested. Um, but for now, we'll just look at the melody. So look, so over this. Da -da. So 
So the first three notes are literally C, E, and G, which we already know is a C chord. And then the last note is a C, so the C again, we're just playing the same note, so we can technically play the melody like this. We can like, instead of just playing the G up here, we can play the G down there instead. Like, it, it, as long as we play the notes, it's, 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 it's still the melody. Um, But these two aren't in the chord, so how can we play them? Why can we play them? We'll get into that later too. These are very special notes. Technically, to get a melody, you just play the chord and try to travel from note to note. This is an a chord note. This is a chord note. So you just you just play from each one, or you just skip ahead to them, or you could start in the middle like this E note instead. There we go. That's the melody. We're playing. Da -da 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 -da. So as we hit one of these three, uh, one of these three notes. We're 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 Gucci, as the kids say. We're rising. As the kids say, we are um, groovy. As the Gen Xers say, no, no, those are those are younger, right? Anyways, <laughs> the boomers. So whenever I'm doing stuff like this, like big arpeggio uh, stuff, I'm literally just playing the same the same notes over and over. C E G C E G C E G C E G C E G. And there's special other notes that sound good with those other notes too. So I can play this this note, this note, this note. Sometimes this note sounds good. So I can play all these other notes in the C major scale. C D E F G A B C or Do Re Mi Fa Sol La Ti Do. If you some of your friends are harmonizing together and they're playing, they're singing C E G separately. You can always sing. Some other extra note too. So this is the one. So for over the C melody we have, we're playing. Melody is C E G again. C then B A. Um. B A. C, B, A, G. So Daniel, yeah, this all fits the major chord too. And we hit G, we hit G, we hit C, we hit all these good notes. And these technically these only these two notes are out of it. But then when we get to the D minor chord. Oh yeah, we end with another E G before we hit this chord. It's so, it's so like, you know, as long as you're playing within the, within the chord. All I'm playing these, let's look at the colors, right? Like red, green, and blue. Almost all the notes I'm playing are this note. So when we get to the next chord, I'll explain why it's D minor in another lesson, in our minor lesson. Now we play this. So the first melody note is F. So melody F. That's again part of the one of the chord, one of the notes in this chord. And it plays D D E. Okay. Very simple. So D E. So again, this note technically not in this one in, in not in this chord. Sounds nice playing it together, right? Look at this sound. Ooh. I like this sound. So this is still an allowable note in the melody. Technically they all are, but it's good to have the uh You can make a whole song just based on these two notes. So nice. 
nice, so nice, it's pleasant. And then this is right above like the D note, so it makes sense that you can just go up and down. Except when we go down, the chord changes to this. And we found a D is also in this note, this chord. So we can play this note now. And it's in the G major, so so the melody for this one is... But, but, but. So D. It's just e, D, E, D, C. It's so good. It makes so much sense that these are the chords and notes we could play. too if we play it so this note we can play even though it's part of not, not part of the chord and then we're back home and the rest of the song uh it obviously transforms quite a bit it does this sort of thing Ooh, very dramatic that's part of our harmonic minor lesson i have planned for later accidentally hitting a forbidden note and getting there's no forbidden notes there's no forbidden notes. I want to um, try to dispel all those rumors. There's no forbidden notes. Like, we could play this note. C. Uh-huh. Ooh. So you can say, this isn't a forbidden note. It's just an extra spicy note. This sounds nice. We already played this note over, uh, I think, one of our, our chords. Ah. Uh, sounds a little wrong because we already have this note right next to it right we already have the E note so playing this note is a little off yeah that sounds nice that sounds good that sounds good uh, sounds really lifted lifted but not wrong it's not forbidden this is a little I think it sounds quite nice it sounds a little dreamy, a little weird. It's a technically the litigan scale we're playing. This sounds fine, this sounds great. G, wonderful, it fits, it fits. Ah, uh, it's a little off, but you can find some point use for it. It's a little, pretty fun tension. Ah, uh, see, we already played this, remember in our melody? So we already played this A note. Very nice. And then we hear, oh, this sounds great. It sounds like a jazzy bluesy song. So that's great. Ooh, this sounds like a jazzy song too. And we're back home. So you see, none of these notes are forbidden. They just have their own flavor to them, and you have to be smart about what you use and when you use them. So you have to know the identity of each of these different notes if you're gonna write with all of them. When a jazz player like plays the wrong notes, you know, if he's not like blindfolded or something, if he's like actually playing, you know, the wrong notes, it's not, they're not wrong. He knows what each note, he knows what each note will do to its, to the flavor of the, of the chord. You can do that. I can play something like that. And it sounds like, ooh, something, I don't know, something quite exotic. Because I know what that note does. It's not just random playing, right? You're not just, it's not like random whatever. Like, you know, I know what this note can do to this chord. So I can do that. So I, I know what this note, what kind of quality this note will have. I'll have a dream-like quality. And I can make it go up you know you could play with it in certain ways how about this one you know I said that was odd but you know the um, what's the Dr. Mario song <laughs> it's you know if you know how to use it if you know the context of like you know if it fits in what you want the song to sound like then you can use it it shouldn't be like mindless though. Like you, you have to know 
what kind of sound this can have for your for your like you know just be smart about what you're playing and know what you're playing that's the that's the main thing you can play whatever you want but it's useful to know what it is you're actually playing like when I play this I'm playing that note again it's a note above the fifth the sixth we're gonna call that the major six Okay, there's all these sorts of things you could do. And so, the same way all these notes can add different colors, different colors to your chord, the same way a, a, a melody that only kind of plays these simple notes can be very, 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 very nice and pleasant. So I'm playing this and that note, they're not part of the chord, but I know what kind of qualities adding this B note will add. Remember, we played a whole bunch of them. So this side is a nice quality, this is a nice quality, that's a nice quality. So I can play them all in the melody too, and I'll know what kind of sound they'll add to this, compounding onto it. Like just painting with, uh, painting with colors, painting with uh, sound colors. We have this as our foundation. We're adding little colors onto them. this note it's so good uh, perfect um bunny dream song it sounds dizzy if you had a tritone you summon C. <laughs> nobody ever believed that actually um i have a whole lesson again on the tritone um oh god all my all my all my all my windows closed so the tritone you know this last chord um there we go Huh. It's not showing up. Oh god, I'm so down. There we go. Now it's showing up. So this is a kind of chord you're playing. So we're playing all these notes together. Technically, if we strip this down, let's get rid of this note and this note. What is this? This is a tritone. Y Y Z by Rush. So that's what I. Whenever I need to think of how a tritone sounds, I kind of think of that song. dissonant as before it sounds a little off but it's it's actually part of the major scale it's all part it's part of the big happy family that is the major scale even the tritone so I lost a lot of money to Guitar Hero's Cabinet playing YYZ. Wait, what? What is Guitar Hero's Cabinet? 
Oh, oh, that's what you mean. <laughs> like an arcade. The arcade, oh my god. I saw that, like, I went to, like, some arcade place the other day, and I saw I saw the Guitar Hero thing there. I, I didn't play. I've never been good at Guitar Hero. <laughs> Unrelated to the lesson, but B notes color is very nice. Oh, yeah, I try to make it a pink. See, I try to make it, like, um... I try to make it like the rainbow. Look, it goes almost like the rainbow. You know, red to yellow, well, orange, you know. Because actually, this is all a part of the lesson, too a rainbow. Combine certain colors together, you used to get a certain uh, bigger color together. Um, I forgot that those notes don't show, which don't show up on stream. So think about like painting with colors. So all the notes together is like white light. All the chromatic notes. We're gonna do a lesson on the chromatic notes because that's how you write a song like Green Greens. We're playing this extra note here. Why is that note there? But it sounds so nice when you play it like that. But then suddenly we do this. We're playing a bunch of these uh, black notes. Does anyone recognize that song? extra colors here like how can you why how why can he play them well um i said like you know just like um if all the keys if all the keys together like um white light together then if we split them up into into different chromatic notes you get a rainbow so each one has its own distinctive color now technically there's no like scientific definition of red this is a name we give to a certain spectrum of um electromagnetic light that we call red, you know, and other animals or whatever can see like different kind of colors or interpret it differently because their biology works different. Let's like our ears, you know. If we try to play these two notes together, our ears kind of sometimes find it difficult to tell the difference, especially if they're even closer together. Like the whole, the whole reason microtonal music works is because, or doesn't work, <laughs> is because like they're playing on being unable to actually like, um, our ears being able, being unable to really pick up on super, super tight frequency differences that are just like slightly different, like, uh, really difficult to really pitch it together, especially when you get into like super, super, um, decimal differences between pitches. Just like light, like we can't see all the different colors, right? We can just see a gradual shifting of gradients between like these red, red and red, you know? Um, violet or whatever and a rainbow or whatever so that's why the 12 pitches exist in a chromatic scale because we needed a way to get sort of them all organized into like red blue green and we call them okay red green 
There we go. Okay, if we get these three notes to like be these colors, then we can work with them a little easier and make paint shades and whatever. Um, so that's why we have 12 tones to make it a little easier to organize all these different frequency ranges in a in a little bit of useful way, in a little bit of practical way for playing music, for playing together, for getting orchestral instruments all in tune with each other and whatever. So if you have all these uh, 12 notes, like, well, how, where does a major scale come from? Like, how do you get that? Well, just like um, certain different patterns of colors look good together. We we figured out that. Oh god, I have this somewhere. Um, mm -hmm -hmm. I have this somewhere in my, oh, a Photoshop thing. <laughs> this looks so bad right now. Okay, let me see if I can get this over. I'm like lurching forward over my keyboard to try to make this work. Um, let's try to get all this. So let's get rid of this, um, all this stuff. So we have all these uh, 12 pitches. Uh, I might change them. Okay, let's change them to flats because my keyboard has flats, right? So uh, DB, EB, uh, G flat, A flat. This is probably like, I think this is one of the most important lesson lessons I'll do. This is like a foundational lesson. I probably, maybe I should have done this first. I did touch on chromatic scale a little bit earlier, but um, this kind of uh, shifted up. Let's let's move this down. Um, highlighter, highlighter. Eh, <laughs> that's all there. Um, okay, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm -hmm. So we have all these all these notes. Um, so go one, two, three. So let's go down here. C, D flat, D, E flat, E, F, G flat, G, A flat, A, B flat, B, C. So again, the it can be either be flats or sharps. You can either sharp up the A to make it an A sharp, or you can flat down the B to make it a B flat. So remember, like, think of it like you're literally flattening the air frequency. So it's instead of really sharper, you're making it a little flatter and like wider. You're really flattening down. When a sound is wider, it's lower pitch. It's like, ah, that when you're doing that, you're literally flattening the wavelength. So just like electromagnetic, just like electromagnetic waves for light. Um, you're flat, let's say you can flatten a color or something. You'd be, you'd be doing the same thing. Um, so you have all these different colors of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, then it goes loops over. So we found out, well, what is our major, major scale? Well, it's a C, it's a D, it's an... E, it's an F, it's a G, it's an A, it's a B, and it's a C. So it's all these notes. I'm right in between. Look. <laughs> so all we have to do is skip uh, the, all these, all these notes. Da, 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 these notes. So basically, it is a certain pattern of whole step. Oh god, I'm, I need to make this a little smaller font, so let's change that. Mm -hmm. So basically we do a whole, let's, let's draw. So it'll be a, we skip this, we skip another note, and we don't skip. Then we skip one note, then we skip one note, then we skip one note, then we don't skip. So it's always this pattern of one skip, one skip, no skip. Then one skip, one skip, one skip, no skip. This is also called like whole step, whole step, whole, whole step, whole step, half step. Then whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Or whole tone, whole tone, half tone, semitone. Whole tone, whole tone, whole tone, semitone. So there's a lot of different words for it. Um, let's write them all out so it'll be... 
uh, whole, 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 half. No, whole, whole, half. Whole, 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 half. So it doesn't matter what note you start at, the C doesn't really matter. The C doesn't matter. Like you could start at any note as long as you follow this pattern. It will always be, it will always be um, a major scale. It's a major scale we all know and love. So if we do it from, let's say, G, let's follow it. We whole step. So we do one, one note. We skip this note because it's a whole step, right? So the whole step is two tones. Let's, do, let's write that too. Um, whole is two notes. Half is one note. Doesn't matter where we start. We could start from C. So let's do that again. C. We skip D flat to D. There we go. Skip a uh, thing to E. So whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. We could start from G down here. So uh, what was it? Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So whole, whole step, whole step, half step. Whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. What is that? Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. It's the same, it's the exact same pattern. We just shifted where we started and we changed the context of all these different notes. Let's start it from E, the lowest note of the guitar, the big low note. So we could do E. Uh, again, whole step. We skip to have to skip the F, or else that would be a half step skip, remember? So, whole step, whole step, half step. These two notes are together, so that's one. And then another whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. That is our new rainbow that we're playing with. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, la, ti, do. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. The exact same thing over and over and over again. Can I request a song? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we also call them, um, it could be whole tones and semitones. Semitones are smaller because semis are smaller. Think about semi. You, you know, you have a semi of something, it's going to be smaller. A sub, you know, a semi something, you know. So a semitone is going to be smaller. Um, it could also just be I like you know like skip a note, don't skip a note. It's the same thing. Um, you got it. So whatever note, if someone says like a root note, you just hear any kind of note. You can hear dun, in the wild, dun, you're a car horn. You can go dun, bum, 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 bum. If you know, like to skip those two next notes, those are like all the notes basically of this chromatic scale. We can just basically do this. So if we want to find out D major, we start at D. We just reorient the little wheel. So it starts from um, let's get rid of this then. Yeah, we'll, we'll shift it over. So D. Here we go. We need to, uh, see D. There we go. DV again. <laughs> this is like very hacky I'm doing. <laughs> I gotta get this D. Oh my God. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> so all I have to do is is redo it. Look, look. Okay. So D, E, G, G, G flat, G, A, B, D flat, D. It's the same pattern. We slotted in a different. We like crank the wheel around, and the same exact pattern gives us these notes: D, E, G flat, uh, G, A. B, D flat, D, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, T, Do, T, Do. It'll always be those right next to each other. You can go downwards too. You just do like half, like opposite. Half, 
to this. Whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. They're right next to each other, so it's a half step. Whole step, whole step. We just figured out the D major scale. We can write anything we want on the D major scale now. It's the exact same pattern. We can do that in C major too. Like, yeah, I mean, obviously we did it in C major. If we're writing a G, if we're writing an A major, same thing. We just know that these are the notes because of the pattern. Um, Cropping and dragging. Yeah, I literally have an MS Paint. Look, I have a whole MS Paint set up. Look, look. Um, <laughs> I'll turn off the filter right now. It's so funny. I figured this out with Luma Key. If you do the Luma Key, look at that. It sounds, it looks so bad, right? But on highlighter, it looks great. <laughs> it takes out all the, the whites. How many scales? Uh, there's 12 of them. Every single note gets its own major scale. And they're all exactly, you just need to shift it in. The E flat, if you know the E flat major scale, this is it. E, F, G, A flat, B flat, C, D. Let's figure that out. So E, F, G, A flat. We skip the A, so didn't say we have to do A. The B flat, to C, then to D. Okay, then E flat again. Wonderful, we did it. That's an E flat, that's an E flat major scale. We can write the exact same green grains. And it doesn't matter what, like, they're all exactly the same scale. They're just different. You're starting at different pitches. You're starting at different notes, but it's the exact same pattern. It's hard to say, like, if you're coloring, I don't know, if you're coloring, if you're coloring in a, it's like, I don't know, you're, you're painting the sky in a different color, but it's still the sky, right? It's still the same thing. It might be a different shade, a different time of the day. A dark sky is still, is still the sky. At night, it's still the same thing. Even though you're painting in slightly different colors. Um, so every single note gets, so if we start at F, we can do F. So I'll, I'm losing all these now. <laughs> I'm losing them. Um, so we can do the same thing. So F, G, A. No, F, G, A. Uh, B flat, C, D, and then I know the rest, E, F. So as long as we're following this pattern, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. So just remember the Do, Re, Mi song, and you'll be able to sing a major key out of any pitch you want. And even play it on an, an instrument. Like if you don't know, like what the hell are all these, you go to a piano, you don't know what to play. You do this, uh, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. You can do that, you can, oh, okay, these are the notes. Half, half, whole, uh, 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 I mean, sorry, whole, whole, half. And then whole, 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 half. Really, it's like the same pattern. Can you play two scales? Ah, oh, you can! People call them, like, I forget what they call them, but, like, if you play different, two different uh, things at the same time, let's see. Um, I'm gonna play A major and C, C major then. Let's see how that sounds. Um, A little off. It sounds a little off, right? But it, you technically you can do it. It's just you have to know what you're doing, right? A lot there's tons of classical pieces, um, like you know, 150 years ago or so, where people were experimenting with that. Yeah, let's try. Let's make the flute play in, in A major, and let's play the piano play in C major. They were doing that. They were just fooling around. Um, what if, like you know? Um, you know. There's a 
write a spring chord. So you're playing A major chord and a, a E flat major chord, basically. So you can play these two things. So the pitch is the only thing that changes. But now the pattern remains the same. You're still doing the same pattern. Um, you know, a series of workouts you have in the morning. You can extend the time you do them, but you're still doing the same series of workouts. I'm trying to, I'm trying to make a good al analogy for this. Uh, these look really bad. These look like um, something lewd. So we're going to do a, a, a new pattern here. I'll write these out again. Um, so if we have a, I'm going to like make a little graphic in like Photoshop that actually like talks about this more, more clearly. If you play something in C and play it in another major scale, can say it'll have a different mood feeling. I, so this is a thing that people talk about. Do you believe in uh, synesthesia or something where people imagine sounds and associate them with colors and stuff like that. So like uh every composer has like their own idea like oh b minor is the darkest is the is a you know is associated with red or c major is you know a kind of blue feeling and they have you know they have all these ideas and that's all just like personal opinion i think it does really matter let's okay so let's say i think the one thing it does really really like matter what key your song is in has anyone ever done karaoke so there's a lot of choices like well i want this in a different key than the original because if sometimes keys are too high, because let's say this. A lot of people can't reach that. But you need to hit that for the melody. And it's like, well, what if you just play the lower notes? Known? That's a little comfortable, but some people can't hit that note. So for singers, for singers and stuff like that, or different instruments, don't you can't play all these notes on it on all the instruments. Some like some instruments you can only play like these many notes, like one scale, and that's it. Like okay, so you'll need to shift the key around. So that's what it means like to transpose songs or transpose the keys. So if you need to, da, 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 if the if the singer can only really sing up to this note, then you can go. All right, how about? We do it in A major instead. You just follow the pattern. You know the lowest note they could sing. You follow that um, whole, you know, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half pattern. And you write the new melody for them that they can sing. It's the same song. It's a little lower, lower, t lower, lower pitch, but it's the same song, you know? Um, I'm so glad I can ans ask, answer questions like this. Does anyone else have more questions? This is so great. That's why I can do like, oh, you down. or do it like this. Oh. Same song. Or these are all different notes, but it's the same music. It's the same like collection of pattern of pitches that we're using. And that's why, like, chord progressions, there's only... That's why when people say there's not that much music you can really create in the world because everything, like, repeats. Well, it's like, you know, that's kind of the reason. Um, you know, if that's all we have to work with. But there is, of course, an infinite amount of... No one would say there's no... No one would ever, ever say there's, like, there's no more paintings that could ever be made because all the colors already exist. Right? Isn't that, wouldn't that be really, really stupid? It's like until someone invents a new color, then painting is useless. That's what I hear people saying, oh, you know, all the notes, there's only so many notes, so there's no point making music. It's like, that's, that's so stupid. It's so stupid. It doesn't make any sense. So, um, so keep that in mind if you ever hear someone say that kind of dumb shit. <laughs> um, so you can. So hey, look at those two chords. I know the E major, A minor. Well, what happens in the green greens? Same 
cards. Ha, <laughs> it's for Elise. So you hear that in millions of music. I have a whole lesson planned on um, where that comes from, how, why, why that, why you can play that, why you play this note and not this note. I talked about it before. It sounds better, right? But that's uh, that'll be in our Aeolian mode um, thing. No more math can be done. We made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Yeah, yeah. This is all the numbers you need. This is all the colors you need. Um, so. There's more, there's more to this. There's way more, way, way, way more to this. So if we got that, um, let's see, um, let's write this again. D flat, D, E flat, F, G, G flat, A, A flat, B, C. Um, so if we have, again, C, um, D, F, we're going back to C major, guys, but it's saying, like, um, if you know C major, you know all the scales. If you know C major, you know every single major scale. Really, you know all the other scales, too. I got into that. Every The C major scale has every scale in it, technically. playing all these notes. This was all these white notes, technically, you know. So that's another, that'll be our modal lesson. I think by next week we should be able to get to it. Um, Lovecraft's Color Out of Space fan going insane right now. Does anyone have any other questions? Um, so anyways, we have C, D, B, E, A. So how do we get, what is, what is the major, like, the first chord of this is a major chord. Well, how do we get this chord out of out of this chromatic scale, or even out of the major scale. Well, we can do two things. Um, it'll either be the first... Uh, I'm missing a note here. I'm so dumb. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Um, I messed this up. <laughs> here we go. Let me fix this. <laughs> uh, e a flat. There we go. Then B flat. There we go. Perfect. I knew something was off. I knew it instinctively. So E. Ba, 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 ba. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're following and petting the hair. I can't believe I saw that gift up. Oh my god. Um. G. Um. E. F. And then G, so we know that we have to skip all these middle notes, right? We have to skip whole, 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 half, whole, 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 half. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. So E and G. So this makes the, the C major scale. We do the first note. We do this, the third note in the scale, and we do the fifth note in the scale. Ba -ba -ba. That's how we got a major chord. Perfect. But how do we get this chord then? What what happens? Well, we do the same thing to the D, to the second note here. We get the second note here. Well, D, we skip a note. F, we skip a note to A. D, F, A. Dead um, fawn arrival. There we go. What about this? This what, what does this note has a has a scale too? Every note has has its own chord. All we do is do this pattern, this little pattern where we skip the middle notes in between. One three five, 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 one three five. So we can play the. We can play that. We can play that chord. Just by this note being the chord, that note being the chord, one, three, five. So again, like we do G, 
Um, B would be, obviously, we skip G, B, and then D. Ba, 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 ba. This, this A shouldn't be. <laughs> I'm making so much mistakes. Uh, okay, yeah, G, B, then we skip the C to, to D. So that's how we make a G, G major chord. F A C. We skip the uh, we skip the B in four. One three five. One three five. One three five. One three five. If you go, ever go to piano, if you're ever at a public place and see a piano somewhere, you can play any all these nice nice chords. Just go in order. If I'd have been so fine, da 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 then you. Like a Rolling Stone, it's just going, it's just like these, these chords going up. And if you're like, oh, I have a bass guitar, well, just play the lowest note. Just play the note where these extra, these extra notes are extending from. I don't know the lyrics. I want to feel Again, I'm just playing the arpeggio, CG, to make those fancy little flourishes. You can do that too on piano. If your fingers can do it, you can just, you know, to play these three notes. Up and up. I keep playing these notes that they're not on it, just so you can actually see. Okay, so, we know how to make all the chords. Um, let's get rid of some of this stuff again. I'm running out of space here. But what, well, well, um, there's something very important we're missing here. So, um, first we'll just, uh, let's write out all the chords here. Uh, no, we won't do that. We don't need to. It's fine. Uh, we'll, we'll look at it like each chord, but, um, something else that's really special I wanted to tell, talk about. So remember how I did this whole demonstration, which each of the notes over a C, C major chord, well, this isn't in the C major scale. It's not in that pattern. This is a half step above, not a whole step. Technically, this whole step is supposed to be. So how can we can play this? Or we can't play this. Like, you know, what does this note mean? And all these other notes. How about all these other notes? When do they get to play? Well, they get to play all the time if you know what you're doing. all these notes in the chromatic scale have a certain name associated with them and I'm not sure I'll be able to get them all all listed on here if I can um, have my chart I wrote, made a little chart I made a bunch of different charts actually um, yeah okay let's let's see if I could get this up um, uh, bah, bah, bah. this should work Let's bring this into uh, MS Paint. Oh, is that too big for ah, that's too big for MS Paint? Oh my God, that's 14 megabytes big. This image. Um, okay, let's save as a JPEG. Okay, so this should be better. Hopefully this is better. Let's open this up. <laughs> up, 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 Twitch, Twitch. Where's my Twitch folder? Here we go. Don't save. Okay, so we're going to turn off our highlighter. Um, we're going to open my MS Paint window. Here we go. Perfect, perfect. Okay, we got a little window going. We'll make this a little smaller. There we go. 
can I peek through? Can I peek through? Can I, can I, can I, can I, can I be here? Okay. Okay. So this is probably the most important, one of the most important things, I think. Let's move the little Kofi bar. A little donation. Donation bar. Here we go. Um. Let's move it below. Okay. So we have, uh, yeah, I guess I'll post them on Twitter. Uh, this is just, okay, this is just, um, a way to, like, categorize each of these notes. So we have C, <laughs> thank you. So we have C, C, D flat, D, D flat, E, F, G flat, G, A flat, A, B flat, B, C. But what are all these notes? Like, why do we choose... Why do we choose any of why is the pattern why does a pattern work like that? Why not why not just do like one, two, three, four, then that's our scale. We don't play any of these middle notes. We'll just play like is that a real scale? Like well the problem with like painting, if your all your colors look too similar on a painting, you won't be able to tell what's what, right? So you need some distinction between the notes. If you start to like play, run together, run them together too much, you start to lose what like flight of the bumblebee. Like -la 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 -la. what even specific notes are they? They're too like similar to the to another. So that's, your speech starts to slur if you're if you're not enunciating enough. So think of all these different different in pitches as a enunciation tactic. It's a lot different from. Sometimes you want to slur your speech. Sometimes you want to... You know, that sounds very colorful. But, um, and sometimes you want to have different notes up. As long as you know what each note is doing to your chord, your under nine chord, then you can do whatever you want. But it's important to know what each uh, chord actually means. So, the first note, of course, is a root C. And then we call this note this minor second. And this is a major second. So these are the two seconds notes. And the thing is about most of the, most of like the major scales. I mean, most of the, <laughs> I said major scales, but I really mean the main scales. Like I meant like the, the, the major as in important scales. <laughs> um, my internet sucks right now. I hate to tell us when I'm trash of all this time. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Kaval. I wonderful. I mean, I mean, I mean for, like, a lot of these to be washed over on VOD. Like, you guys can watch them on VOD. Although, I like you guys watching live so I can ask questions, answer questions, and hear you guys ask questions. If anyone has any questions right now, I'd love to, I'd love to, I'd love to, I'd love to hear about them. Please ask, please ask. Oh, yeah, we're also donating, we're also doing a donation drive for a second monitor. <laughs> and a little monitor arm thing. I'll get this friggin' desk cleaned up. Um... Okay, so we have minor second, major second. The, it's minor because it's flattened, and major because it's sharp, like, you know, thing. just like, again, flat, normal. Because uh, if you think about, like, sharpening a note makes the sound sweeter, almost like, again, like you're, you're making a, a higher contrast color. You're firing those frequencies or something, you know? You're, you're, you're sharpening it, so it's, it's a little brighter. So when I play these, let's play a, all of our C major we're going to do. So a minor second, ooh, minor second over C major. It, it sounds very uh, spicy. These two things are competing, but sometimes it's exactly what you want. very powerful note you probably don't want that in your C major scale if that's if you want to if you want a little bright bright happy uh, thing so you probably want to go have the major second instead okay there we go we got our major second so our next our next series of notes are the thirds these are the most important pair of notes <laughs> This decides why we call it a C major scale instead of a C minor scale. All the other notes don't matter. None of these notes ma matter. You can just literally play this note, that note, and that note, and technically that would be like a C major scale, because this is all that decides if it's major or minor. If I play this, ah, uh, sounds 
minor. This sounds major. It's so powerful. This this frequency, this middle frequency between the two chords, it's, it's so powerful. And this isn't just C, by the way. Any any single chord you start in will follow these rules that a thing. So that this is a minor second of G. This is a major second of G. This is a minor third of G. This is the major third of G. It doesn't matter what scale you're in. It matters what chord you're playing at the given time. If you're in, if you're playing F. Same things, minor second, major second, minor third, major third. So even when you're playing So when you're playing these two chords, the, the, the note shift, this becomes the minor second of D. This becomes the ma ma major second of D. And then to this, the same thing, like the so at all about the chord you're playing, not just the scale. So if you know if you know that, you can improvise over any chord, any scale, and you know exactly what you're doing and what each note will will bring to the chord. Um, so we have a mi minor minor third and major third. Wonderful. Um, so any chord you can make any chord a major or minor by just making that. So you know this is a major third of the G make it a minor minor chord perfect um we'll do the more of that later um i'm sleeping oh pia octobot i see you in advance too wonderful okay you've been so wonderful and i'm so glad you're like back online and stuff i hope you're having a wonderful time talking to your friends again and stuff um i'm gonna retweet my my thread i was like retweeting a few times there we go okay so we're on our next, we're on our next thing, a, por a force. So technically this isn't part of the major chord, you know, but it's still important. So we play these two notes. Oh, it sounds quite powerful, doesn't it? That's why it's called a perfect chord. Because the thing is so, the ratio between these frequencies is so like perfect, there's no decimals, that it's hard to even tell where, where one note ends and where the other begins. Almost like this note. These are basically mirror images. Like they're all so similar that like um that's like that's why it's all perfect for it. But technically, you can also think of it as a minor fourth because we also have our major fourth, our augmented. Augmented means it's sharpened. Like, that's that's all it means. You're just bringing it up. Augmented means up, diminished means down. We'll go into that when we get into diminished chords, but that's another little musical synonym. So, diminished means you're bringing something down, or flend also means you're bringing something down. And augmented, you're bringing something up. So, you're augmenting it. My vision is augmented. It's added on to it. You're adding something um, you're adding something extra to it. So the fourth, we have our augmented fourth. And if we play that over a major chord, I think it sounds quite lovely. But the thing is, we can't really play both of these at the same time in one chord or one scale, really. We have to kind of make a choice. Either the perfect for it, or the augmented for it. That goes for all of them, and we'll go into that when we build our major scale using these rules. So, our next thing is, what will be, what will be? The perfect fifth. The perfect fifth. It sounds so good, you could barely even tell it's a different note. Can you really tell if something else is going on? Like if I play this... This sounds like it's so much more colorful. The fifth doesn't really add that much color. It adds like definition. You're strengthening your original note, you know? But then this, you know, oh, the D, this, this major second note makes it sound so floaty. But a fifth note doesn't really do that much at all. And if you realize this is a perfect, this is a perfect fourth dif difference. Okay, 
New donation from someone. Oh my god. Oh my god. Let's see. Let's see. I'll go on my go on my Gmail. Someone brought me a coffee. Red 29%. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, the several styles in your tradition of European music really likes using a lot of different words for the same thing. You think some of us simplified a little. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, there's um a different there's a there's beneficial quality to being to being um there's a beneficial quality to being having all these different definitions for things. And a lot of these things haven't existed for thousands of years. Only maybe a couple of hundred that we've had this kind of organized organized of everything kind of systematized for us, you know? Before it was a lot more looser, loosey-goosey, and different instruments, different countries couldn't even talk to each other properly. So they kind of all developed independently. But now we're all uh, um, the global community of musicians all sort of sharing ideas. So that's why we have all these different words for, <laughs> words for crap. Um, and, you know, different words are different, are useful for different things. Um, there we go. So the F, I call it F sharp, but really it's like a G flat, but whatever. It's the same, same thing. Again, synonyms. So now we're on our six. So again. Ah. Uh, it's really, uh, off. It's really close to the five. So again, almost like this. It's competing a little bit to that, for that perfection. It's a little off perfect which can be a really effective tool, like let's say this. Hey, that's great. Maybe you won't be landing on this, but maybe it will be a little transition note to something like this. Our major six. A major six is super, super common everywhere. Um, so every country decides their own terminology for it and then decide to split the difference. Yeah, basically. 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 Europeans have even more thousands of years of tradition of murdering each other. I mean, if you look back, you know, a hundred, a hundred or so years ago, a little bit more, like a lot of musical traditions were based on like nationalist tendencies. A friend was teaching me about this. Like a lot of the idea that like, you know, we should look into like have different um, national uh, identities for music and different like celebrity composers for different that would, you know, I'll be embroiled in like the political fucking warfare of of Europe. It's it's a big history of um, big history of politics in all these things. And a lot of composers were like, I I don't fucking know. I just like making music. But you know, it's not really up to the artist, is it? Um, and so, uh, some other musicians were like really pretentious <laughs> and wanted like thought like, yeah, this is about the bring up the German spirit or something like that, that kind of thing. Or the Russian, you know, all the, you know, it's the, it's the, it's, um, music is, is very cultural. This is, again, art, it's just like painting. Imagine trying to say painting isn't about, like, isn't tied up with a bunch of, like, national, traditional, cultural identity stuff, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah, basically, uh, so look like when I play the major second. Thank you, Kuya, Kuya. Thank you. Forty months. Oh my God. Forty months. You are awesome, Abu 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 Abu. Thank you so much. Does he have a song request? Do you have a song request? to the end guys we're almost to the end so we're at our ninth and tenth notes oh i haven't finished see i didn't finish putting the label on see 10 i was gonna name 10 9 10 11 okay so we're at our um their ninth note and our tenth note 
It's a major six, we call it, and it sounds really pleasant. It's so pleasant that you can barely even notice it's there. It's almost so, it's so like imperceptible to me. Like it's barely even really a, a note. It's like such a, such a, um, what do you call it? Unassuming. It's an unassuming little note color you can add that really almost always fits when you have the, when you have the scale for it. Um, so imagine like the end of green greens. We're playing major six to the fifth, to the perfect fifth, to the root of, of the, of the C. Like it's, it's so, um, the friggin' blues. Oh God, I can't play that fast, but like, you know, you know, that the, the bluesy riff, like it uses the major, the major sixth here. It sounds nice, or I think the song someday, but it's very jazzy. Dimension 20, and it's a DD anthology show. Anthology show that oh, something else fell. Um, you mean like is it like some documentary or something, or is it like people's tabletop adventures in like story form? That's always cool. So sad, many played Despacito. I don't have no one, I just wanted to say you're really cool and glad you're doing well. Thank you, Kilio. Thank you. It's, this has been like the most exciting thing. I, I kind of stay up at night thinking about what I'll talk about next in my next stream. My next little music lecture. <laughs> so, okay, we're at our major six. Well, what is this next note? Oh, this note. We're at our seventh notes now. Seventh. May We have a choice. Minor sevenths or major, major sevenths. This one doesn't really sound very minor, it actually sounds very, very pleasant. It's not like this note, which is kind of, kind of dissonant, or this note, which is kind of dissonant, or even this note, which is kind of dissonant, or even this note, which is kind of dissonant. Meanwhile, this seven sounds pretty good. Remember that um, train journey guy I was uh, made a song about last last time. I was basically using the major seventh, the minor seventh here. Minor seventh adds a lot of dimension, a lot of flavor, a lot of uh, spice, a lot of um, you know, a lot of salt. Um, and it is the basis for our. Dominant, remember I was talking about subdominant, dominant chords, whatever as well. I'll remind you again, the, the perfect, you know, the this this G major in green greens is a dominant chord. Technically, in every G ma in every dominant chord, there's a hidden little mi major uh, minor seventh. That's what makes it a dominant chord. It's a major chord. It has that major third instead of a minor third. So it's a it's a G with the major third, a normal fifth, a perfect fifth, and a seventh, a minor seventh. That's what makes it a dominant because it resolves so good to the C. I have a whole lesson on dominant chords later. So you don't need it, you know, you should try to keep it in your head. songs are literally just the dominant and the, and, and the dominant chord and the, the root. So the minor, so the minor seventh is really powerful. Also, and in, in something called the mixolydian mode, which we'll be looking at later as well, it's just a like a C major scale instead of the do re do re mi do re mi so la ti do. Instead of the T here, we use the, uh, the minor seventh instead. Do, re, mi, 
That's a la ti do, ti do, ti do, do, ti do, do, da da, da 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 Try to do some scat singing along to any, uh, whatever solo you're playing, like It really helps. It really helps with like everything, just like knowing what you're playing and having some color, making sure you're actually playing like colorful notes and like, like, you know, making sure you're playing as lyrical and also singing, uh, practicing your voice training as well. You're singing and everything. So, okay, we have our cool minor seventh. Uh, cool minor seventh. How about the major seventh? Ooh. If this is salt, then this is sugar. Ooh, so nice. Especially when you add, see, the major second. Let's add that major second onto this. Let's add, um, how about this, the, the, the perfect fourth? Ooh, so perfect. Add this one as well, the, the major six. It all sounds so tasty together. And we're adding the, the root again. The red note to the red note. I think you got a red note to the red note. There we go. Back to start. And we loop around again. So it doesn't matter again what note you start at. It could be C, it could be A, as long as you like go to these steps. So we could basically make a chord this way. Make a scale. So let's make the major scale so um we want basically um let me get let me get a highlighter a nice color okay so we want the blue so we have to start here of course see and then what what will we choose will we choose a minor second or the major second well, we want the major scale, so. Oh wait, actually, uh, sh should I go, should I let you guys decide? <laughs> Do you guys want to decide what, what scale we'll build? So we started to see here. So we can choose one or two. We can choose either choose a minor or the major. We can't choose both. So we have to choose one or the other. So minor second or major second. So let's just do this for example, major second. So if it's a third note, a D, there we go. So it has to be D. So we're going to do uh, major third. Let's choose major third. There we go. Let's choose not perfect fourth. So let's choose, let's choose, I mean, not augmented fourth. Let's choose perfect fourth. There we go. And of course, we have to choose the G. There we go. It's like, it's like you know, not, not optional. It's mandatory. Uh, let's choose my major six. And major seventh. And then root again. There we go. I'm really bad at drawing, obviously. But we have C, D, E, F, and then G, and then A, then B, then C. So we can't, like, if we choose both, let's say we choose both um, minor and major six. That's like allowable if you're like playing a melody, but it makes it a little difficult to tell the difference between these three notes. So to have some distinction between them, we're just gonna keep it separate. So if you choose all these different, all these up, this this pattern of notes, whole, whole, half. Technically, look, we're skipping a note. We're skipping two whole step, whole step, then a half step to these two because it's five and six, you know. And then another whole step because we're skipping seven. Another whole step because we're skipping nine. Another whole step because we're skipping B. And then B flat. And then we're going to C. So whole step, whole step, half step. Whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So that's the major scale. Oh god, am I going to be able to undo enough? Okay, I am. <laughs> so what happens if we just chose all these left hand ones? All these right hand ones, I mean. We choose all of these ones only. 
instead of choosing this perfect fourth. Well, let's try that. So we have C, we have the D, like before, F, E, but then we also have the G flat, the F sharp. Um, we have the G again, the A, B, and C. So everything's the same except this note. We, we have to trade this note for this note, basically, because it's one of the fourths. Oh, that's even brighter. That's like, that's even hot. It's sweeter sounding in a way. This like, um, this note is a little, a little spicier than this note, you know? Then this note is a little spicier than this note. You know, it's, 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 uh, it's raised, right? Just like this is raised to that. This is raised to that. So if we raise all of these notes, have a very lovely sounding scale. Let's add our major seconds, those always sound good. And our major sixths. I know a major seventh, of course, too. So whenever I'm improvising, like if I'm playing a C major chord, and I'm playing something like this, like that kind of melody, I'm thinking major seventh, major second, off of this. Remember, it's a major second above the C. And I'm thinking like augmented, augmented fourth, sharp fourth. And then I'm thinking this is a si this is the third, major third. You know, I'm thinking in intervals. This is called intervals. So now you're thinking with intervals. So if you just think of intervals, instead of only the scale or whatever, you'll be able to know exactly, be much more aware of what you're playing. So if I change to this chord, it's like, well, I know the D. You can just move it all, move all the notes up. It's the same exact thing. So just like with um, C major, if we choose D major instead, so D, we do the same thing. Uh, major second is the E. Major third is the um, G flat. Whole, whole, whole. Right, the whole step, whole step. And then um, a perfect fourth would be a G because it's a half step remember it's all the same pattern and then we're doing perfect fifth perfect fifth is an A because we're two notes up right so da, 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 da. and then um, and then to get the other major yeah the major six right so this is the major sixth note. And this would be the minor seventh. It's right by each other. It's a dominant chord. We got the major chord and the and that seventh, the bluesy note. It doesn't matter what chord you what note you start at, you can always get these get these patterns. If I wanted to play a G Lydian, I know exactly what. I have to play that augmented fourth instead of the perfect fourth. This is the major seventh. Because if I was playing the minor seventh, it would sound like. The perfect fourth like you know it if you think of intervals it's all interchangeable with every other scale every other key no matter every other chord you're playing if your chord if your song goes like this that's a lot of chords what the hell
hell is going on here? And it stays on here for a while. I know all the, like, all the different intervals. Anyways, it's, it's the same. So this is a, you know, minor second of the G, major second of the G, minor third, major third, perfect fourth, you know, it's, it's the same. It doesn't matter what note you start at. If you could still remember all the pattern of all these different notes, you can play, you can play anything. Um, so this is what all these notes mean technically in a chromatic, in a chromatic scale. Um, in a chromatic scale. So, it, um, I had another little thing for you. So it also means like you contain, if you know the, um, again, like major third, you know this is a major third, because it's um, five notes up. One, two, three, four, five. Five notes up. And a minor third must be four notes up. So how do I make a major chord? Well, five notes up. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. It's built on thirds, basically. You're skipping like one, this, 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 and then you can add the seventh. So basically, like, you know, if we skip, if we do everything, that to make a, the D, ma the D uh, minor chord, we do this, this, and that note instead. We're still skipping every single note in our, you know, skipping every second note, basically, to get our chord. Um, kind of just want to play now. Oh, yeah, remember Green Greens? <laughs> So the roots, my major seventh, major third. Wonderful. Oh yeah, let's make a min minor scale next, but uh, one more thing. So it'll be, I know like in the melody, we're playing these two notes, I know, again, major seventh, major sixth, to the perfect fifth, they're home. As long as we land on one of these notes, it usually sounds pretty good. We can choose not to do that too, but to make a nice children's uh, happy melody like that, you know, it's good to do that. How about like something like this? What's going on there? It's a Mozart song. I get the ending mix up. Remember Green Greens? Well, the Mozart song starts like this. Almost the same. It goes up the arpeggio. Arpeggio is just the notes of a chord. Um, the separate notes, you know, separate. If, you, if you're playing, uh, arpeggio is something like this. A chord is this, an arpeggio is just that. You know, it's just you're playing the notes of the chord in separate arpeggio. are built off arpeggios. Almost a lot of video game songs, obviously, especially Kirby songs, because if you can only play one note at a time, you can't play a full chord like this. You have to separate it. This is a video game song, because the notes are separate, because the game chip can't handle playing two sounds at once, so it'll play two sounds really alternating, so at least make it sound like it's playing at the same time, right? If you get the harmony of the chord out, then that's all that matters. Um... What was I saying? Oh yeah, the Mozart song. Well, it does this. That's a G chord, so it's doing this. It's doing C, G to C. 
So this is their first notes, right? It's their first uh, chords. Almost like, um, very similar to Green Queens. And then it does this. So it plays the B, the B note, just like in the G chord. It's the major third. If it was a minor third, it would be this note. But it's a major third because it's... These two are the seconds, these two are the thirds. These are the seconds, these are the minor, minor second, major second. It's a whole step apart. Minor third, major third, whole step apart. So if you have two whole steps, that's a major third. If it was a whole step, half step, that's a minor third. If it's a whole step apart, major second, minor second. Again, so we know this has to be a major chord, G, G major chord, because there's a major third above this note. Da, 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 da. If we, like, why isn't it a B chord, someone asked. Like, why isn't this note the note name in a chord? Well, it can be if we do the same intervals, interval sort of shifts away from this. Technically, this is a major third away, uh, a minor third away. Get it? Because it's a whole step. Uh, it's a half step and then a whole step. So that's three, four notes up. Okay. Major third. That's a minor third, I mean. If we have our fifth up there, oh, that's a different, that's a different chord. We're playing something like this. So technically, we define it by this note because it's creating that pattern, that series of patterns that have that um, this kind of pattern. It makes it makes it the home chord. Technically, you can call it this chord too if you really want to get artistic. Like this is a minor third. This is the. Um, this is the, what would it be? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These are the two, my, uh, minor second, major second, minor third, major third, um, perfect fourth, augmented fourth, and then fifth. But we're at the, the thing. So this would be a minor six chord, basically. Get it? Because we're at B, there's a third. And, and a minor six, not a major six. So it has to be mi minor six. But it doesn't really sound like that to me. I think it sounds better as a G. So all this sort of thing is also, again, more musical synonyms. You can uh, try to think of the D maybe. Maybe it's some kind of weird D chord where you have these things. And it's a perfect fourth difference. And then um, a, a major six. Well, that's not really a chord, again. Like, how would you, you know? It, you kind of would have to define it by this, because it's having that relation of patterns between these two, di two different notes. So this is a, one of the things that, like, it's a little difficult, because sometimes anything could be anything. Like, a uh, C major chord could be any, like, it, you could define it by anything, and it's a little, it gets to where um, a lot of interpretation gets involved. So see, like in jazz, if if like these two, like the guitarists are just playing these things. Well, what what chord is that? Is it a C major chord? Is that an A minor chord? Is that some diminished weird thing? Is that like some G with like extensions, like we just played, like you know, um, like well, you know what is really going on? You kind of have to know the whole context of the song and know your other instruments and so what the other instruments are playing to really get it. So that's where it gets a little confusing. But if we're just doing green greens, then we then we can then we can keep it simple. Um, So yeah, we're on that Mozart song. We're on that Mozart song. Oh my god, I'm slurring my speech myself. Well, what does it do there? Da, this is again we got the major third, and then it plays the perfect fourth, and then and um no 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 this is the yeah the perfect fourth, and then the fifth again, and then back to the roots. So the perfect fourth over the dominant chord, this big chord usually sounds pretty good. It's just more tension, we're building up the tension. So we can play this, da -da. Like it just sounds good. If, if you know that this can like add tension to this note, then you can do it. So even the melody of, 
Like it just, it just, um, you know that this note can add a little bit of tension, a pleasing tension to that little section. Dun, 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 dun. So you can play it. So as long as you know what notes, again, like the whole theme of this whole lesson is, as long as you know what the notes you're playing are adding to the song, then you can play it. If you don't know, then you're probably being a little, a little mindless about it. It's like you're, if you're painting with colors and you don't even know what colors you're painting with, you know, it's probably good to have an idea, a little idea of what, of what you, what kind of sound you want to go for. And if you know what each kind of note can add to it, then, then that's, um, then that's like being a smart, a smart artist, <laughs> a smart musician, or like, you know, a very, um, worthwhile creative creative uh you have a worthwhile creative mind i think i think you should hone your skills so you actually can be like deliberate with your with your music and not just accidental and so if you're doing accidental you can't really you can't really build off that because you don't know what your foundation is if you don't know what chord this is and you have a really nice melody over it well how do you develop that what how do you add extra instruments to it how do you play with other players? How do you harmonize? What was I doing there, right? It sounds... We can go over all that too uh, in another lesson probably. We can do so much with this right now. Um, you know, you can't really do anything. You can't add on to or develop your ideas properly. You can't like grow the music if you don't know what fertilizer you're using or don't know what even seeds you planted. If you're just throwing random seeds out, you could get something good. You could get something nice, but you know, it'll be a happy accident and you can't really develop art off of that for too long, you know. Sometimes I'll just make a wonderful melody just by accident. That's totally fine. But then like, I want to understand what that melody, whatever that melody in my head was, and then I could build off it. I could, th oh, what are the chords? I know the melody, but what the, what the hell kind of chords should I play under it? If I have something like this that's in my head, I don't know what chords to play for that. I don't know. It could be that. It could be... It could be like anything, like I, I can experiment with it. If I know what I'm playing, if I know that the notes are A, B, C, B, A, G, you know, like, that's why learning music is important, I think, for making art. I've just been going random crazy on my keyboard. I always fall flat in my face after a minute. I mean, yeah, it's just about like knowing what you're playing because, and again, it's not a rule that like not all musicians have to do this, obviously. It's more about if you if you want to be a kind of musician that's able to develop their ideas a little more. Not all musicians want to do that. Like a lot of like like um, professional like classical uh, like the most virtuosos like they're incredible and they could play any anything and they have no idea what they're playing. They could play playing like the A note above the C chord and they don't know that this is a major six. They they don't care. They're really good technically, but they have no idea what they're playing. And that's totally fine. They make lots of money. They can like live and have a lot of fun playing music. <coughs> but they can't write for shit. They have no idea how like a melody works. Or why this, you know, they, they don't really know really very deeply. Um, it's just the basics they have, but they they dumped all their talent tree skills into performance and like, you know, like actually playing really well. <laughs> so that's like, that's the path they chose. But if you want, if you're, um, <clears throat> if the path you choose wants to be one where you can develop ideas, um, then you should try to learn a little bit about like the note relationships and how they can all play with each other and interact with each other. Um, so the other little thing I wanted to do, because this is again about music development, I want to talk about. Well, instead of yeah, we chose all the right side of these, right? All the bright, the major, the majors, um, the major ones that had a lot of space between them. We're always leaving a half step space, basically, a whole step space. 
So we're having a lot of openness, a lot of uh, open air. There's a lot of space between each note. A lot of whole steps, not these two, but you know, almost all the others, as, as much whole steps as we can muster. Um, what if we went the opposite direction? We choose our minor second, so C, D, B. We'll choose our minor third. Ooh, we'll choose our another perfect fourth. Very crunched. Everything's crunched together. So from these two, we're we're flattening flattening this one and flattening this one. So everything's crunching down like gravity. And, um, and we're gonna keep on going. And we're still gonna choose the fifth. And then we're gonna do minor six. This one. And we're gonna do minor seventh. Up, 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 up. And we're gonna do C again, of course. We have to choose C. So everything's been flat. Almost everything that we can flatten, we flatten. So we flattened our seventh to this one. We flattened our sixth to this one. <coughs> We flan this. We flan this note to the, the F. We found our major third to the minor third. We flan our major seventh to the minor, uh, major second to the ma minor second. Such a colorful scale. build a chord off of all those things. Uh, just like we did with the major scale, remember? We did like the ba bum ba ba bum ba ba bum ba ba bum ba ba bum like the rolling like a rolling stone. Well let's do that with these. Ba ba bum ba 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 bum Let me start again. I, I'm not great at piano again, by the way. <laughs> this is a secondary instrument for me. It has to be this note because it can't be this because we we already ruled out the E. We right? we chose this note instead. The mind the um we chose this note for a scale. So in keeping with our strict scale regulation right now, we're trying to figure out the chords to the scale. We have to choose the F. So this is going to be a D flat major. Um, because of the D flat minor, it would be this. Get it? Just like for this. Goes to minor, minor, major. So this is the major, D flat major. Then we go up here, another E flat major. It can't be E flat minor, or else it would be this note instead in the middle. But we chose to use the G, remember? And then we go up to F. And then we can't choose, we can't, oh, it can't be an F major chord because we don't have the A. So we're gonna choose this. Remember A flat, we chose our minor six, our minor six in the scale. So if we're playing the F, it has to be the, the minor as well. Um, and then we have the G, G, G note, and we make the minor, the minor chord out of it, okay. And then we have our minor six chord. There we go. And then what is the next one? This one. Uh, we can't choose this note because uh, we flattened it. So it has to be this. So B minor. B flat minor. making a mistake somewhere. Um, 
But anyways, that's what you have to do to like build a court. You can choose any any path you want, as long as you choose one of one of each. So one, so if you have both major and minor in a chord, it's going to be a minor in one scale. It's going to be like, it's going to be some kind of blue scale, like some kind of modal thing. You're not really working with uh, Western scale theory here. Um, if you have both of these in a scale, it's just runs together too much. You can have both a minor and a major second in one scale, unless you really want to, but you know. Uh, it's hard to build chords off of this too. So same thing, like it's hard to have um, both the perfect fourth and the perfect fifth in one scale. Um, minor six and major six. Minor six, major six, you know. So that's why we separate them enough so you choose one or the other sort of thing. Um, just pick out a didgeridoo so you don't have to bother with skills. Hey, didgeridoo still uses scales. It still uses notes. Everything uses notes. It's just different. So instead of working with chords, a lot of traditional music will just have the notes instead. It'll just have the drone. Oh, see, I made a mistake. So the G chord, the chord built off of the, the G, is not a G minor. It's a G diminished, because we're not allowed to use this note, technically. So we have to make this the chord, this wonderful chord. The G diminished. So not only in diminished chords, not only is the, we flat the minor, but we also flat the fifth. We're not, we don't play, we don't get to play the fifth fret. We can play any of the other notes with it, sure. So it's like, think of it as a super mega uber dominant chord. But we will go into diminished chords in its whole own lesson because they are very magical and very scary, but also the most, and it is the core, the pumping heart of all Western music theory as well. It's very magical chord, as long as you, it's it's a transitionary chord. So um, anyways, we have this cool, every every note possible flatted in this scale. This is called a Phrygian scale. So I have another chart I wanted to show. Let's show this chart. So again, it's still uh, under under construction. Um, hopefully this, hopefully this copies onto wow oh now i know i won't copy i wasn't in copy merged <laughs> okay um here we go let's get rid of those for now and that one no i'll keep this okay this is my next little lesson thing Let's make it a little bigger. Ba -ba -ba -ba. So, as you can see, I have all the notes. Uh, this is something I made while I was not getting sleep properly and doing this instead. <laughs> Phrygian is the only other scale I know because it's the Jewish scale for Eastern European Jewish music. Yeah, the, well, the Phrygian dominant is Phrygian is super super. It sounds so, it's, it's, it's so um, popular in many music, especially instead of a minor third, you choose a major third. composers you copied a lot um <laughs> you mean like inspired me i've um oh god i have a whole ton of them god i could spend a ton listening listen listen um listing them off um 
It's my favorite composers. God, it will take a little too long. For melody writing, I really love um, Cetriani, Joe Cetriani. And um, I love old like video game music, like Kirby stuff. Because um, they do a bunch of cool har uh, Kirby music has done a bunch of like, it's like hyper jazz, like it's hyper pop. Kirby, old Kirby music is like hyper jazz. Not the new Kirby music, which is quite boring. But like the Superstar era, I, I would consider it that. It's like super, super cool chord extensions and everything. Super cool, like jazzy stuff like that. That's super cool. Um, um, I love progressive rock music like Yes, Genesis, of course. I love Moon Safari. I even had, like I, I like Dream Theater, early Dream Theater. I love, um, God, if I listen to a whole bunch, uh, everything I listen to. I love a lot of jazz fusion stuff, Chick Corea, um, tons of jazz fusion stuff. Alan Holdsworth, really, like, this is, Alan Holdsworth is, like, the king of, like, modal playing if we were going really extreme that direction. Um, it'll just be, like, chords. It'll just be, like, um millions of chords and they don't even make sense they're just like a series of scales like the chords have so many notes in them that you're playing basically a new scale all the time and it just makes sense and he just plays within them using all those kind of ideas like yeah this is going to be like this is going to be like a whole home sounding note because it is the root note this is going to have a certain suspended tension to it you know, if you're thinking about that when you're improvising, like, it, everything just makes more sense. Forgotten Land had some sick music. I, I I think it did, yeah. Like, I listened to a bit of the soundtrack. I just, I guess I missed the whole arpeggios going crazy and lots of modulations happening of the old style of music rather than, like, produ like big produced music. Um, so anyways, we have this thing going here. So see, um, we go from... We have all these different things like root note, the root note, obviously, um, the ma minor second, major second being the D flat and the D. We had the minor third and the major third that define whether a chord is major or minor. So uh, in that big dark scale we had, it would have to be a minor scale, one of these, because it has this this third, this third uh, minor third interval in it. And that is this Phrygian mode. So we're doing, see, one, two, one, two, then the fourth note, one, two, three, four, and the chromatically is gonna be the minor third. And then we skip the note and we do this, the sixth note, which is gonna be F. Then we skip another note to, to G, and then A flat, and then B flat, then C. So it's going to be all, all of these notes. So, so C, it's not circle. C, D, oh no, C, D flat, E flat, F, G, A, um, then these two. Ba, 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 ba. So as you see, like everything's darkening, everything's like crunching. Um, from Lydian, Lydian is going to be like, this is Lydian, so D, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C. So if we move all these down, we get the, this Phrygian thing. So we go from Lydian to Phrygian. So that's like the two extreme dynamics. So we go from that whole, remember the other chart I had? We went from the right side to the left side, or left side to the right side, or whatever. So there's two extreme um, differences. But um, what we have been playing with um, is the Ionian scale. That's green green scale. So think of the green green scale as the major scale. It is right in between. We had Mixolydian, which is that that fun bluesy scale. It is a little is like you know a little darker than the others, and then. Ionian mode, major scale, like the major scale, it's a capitalized major scale, is um, right in the middle. And then Ionian is, uh, Lydian is really bright. But 
But see, if we flatten this note, we get the green green scale. It's very stable. It is stable, it's right in the middle, it's really safe and like stable. If we use Lydian, this is actually a bit unstable. It's like a. It's like threatening to almost like break. It almost just wants to sound like go back to this or something. And if we do mix Lydian, it's a little unstable too. Because this is about. This is a dominant chord basically, and a dominant chord wants to move to another chord. That sounds like. It's like sounds so like resolved. So technically, the mix Lydian has this tension to it. The Lydian has this tension to it. Um, so Ionian is nice and stable. It's right in the middle between these two three. So that's the scale we've been playing. And look, it's whole, whole, half, whole, whole, half. It is a major key pattern. Lolian, look, Ionian, Aeolian, fancy, yes. So anytime someone says the major scale or the minor scale, chances are they're talking about Aeolian or Ionian. Um, they just give them fancy Greek island names. That's like, you know, just because it's not even like if people go look at like the old scales that were called Phrygian or where Hyper Dorian, Hyper Mix, so they had all these Greek names for them and they're not really quite the same. They're a little different. They were played differently. Music was all totally different back then, like Gregorian chants. Like people look, oh yeah, look, it uses the same notes as this as this mode, this scale. But it, the Gregorian chant isn't quite the same as how we think of music today. Like they didn't quite play it the same way. They always had some like root note, modal stuff. It's very, it's you know, it's a little shift of difference. So think of all these modes, all these like different uh, scales here, as just like a modern systematization of like thousands of years of like traditional music. So. Like a Phrygian scale. It sounds very traditional. Like you like you imagine some sort of like traditional dance to it. But they'll have like in, they'll have like notes in between the notes for these. They'll have like like how about Miserlu? You know, it uses this note when it's not in the scale. We're not allowed to. We're not allowed to play the B major second, the B, the major seventh. I mean, or the major third. But it's playing both. It's playing both of them. And technically, like how it, that song would actually be played in like traditional instruments would be like different. It would be on like a guitar, in these specific notes. You know, it would be more, be more loosey goosey. So think of these as like systematizations of like old uh, um, traditional kind of songs. Ask me if I know the song when it has my bass. Um, uh, I mean, it is a party trick song. Everyone likes even though it's so easy to play, right? <laughs> um, so as you can see, um, and also, um, so these circled notes are the tritones. You see these? It's basically the tritone differences. Every single scale has a tritone difference. And how the tritone relates to the relates to them it defines what each scale really is like this augmented fourth in the lydian scale is so bright and nice it's a tritone though it's the devil's note but in context it sounds so beautiful so in ionian there's another there's another thing it is this this uh perfect fourth and the major seventh it's a tritone Resolved. But this is what gives us this energy. No other scale has this ability to do that. Every other scale is different. For Mixolydian, it can't do that. It can't do this kind of... It can't really do that. They have this note. They don't have that same resolution. So they all have their own characteristics. They all have their own character. All related to the intervals they have. The specific colorful intervals. This is Lydian, so it has this colorful interval. This is Phrygian, so it has this colorful intervals going on. 
Van Cleve, hello, hello. So, um, this is quite a lot of information, obviously. Um, it's just like, you know, extra. So, you know, you, you kind of choose one or the other. Sometimes you can mix and match. And sometimes you don't, you don't get to have a perfect fit. Sometimes it doesn't allow you to get it. Sometimes, like Locrian, doesn't have a perfect fifth. So it can't really do a lot of the things the other skills can do. It's different. It's a little, you know, we'll have, again, that'll be for the diminished chord lesson in the future. But it is the, we have these other extra skills too, like whole tone. What if we had no half steps? Remember whole tone, whole, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Well, what if we had a whole step, 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 step. We can do that. It's a very mathematical skill. Tritone, 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 tritone. It sounds very close to Lydian in a way, look. Oh, I'm not allowed to play this, right, look. Sounds so cool. Interesting. That's the whole tone scale. So again, these are just like there's lots so much colors you can do with all these with the just the twelve notes. This is just different. Uh, fil you know, you're filtering out different notes to get certain different colors of frequencies and stuff. Um, Pentatonic is like this. This is a blue scale. This is a million, a thousand millions, millions of years of, of uh, thousands of years of human uh, traditional music. I get to my desk, I'm gonna try and play in it. I call us, but it's cool to know there's a small modification from major to minor. Yeah, even if that's all you know, just changing major to minor changes can it give you so much. How about how about I play green greens in Phrygian in this pattern? I just need to know the pattern of notes of the melody, which is Right? Well, in Phrygian, it's, it'll be this instead, right? Instead of that, it'll be this note instead. So this is how you transpose a song into different modes. This goes into our mo my motifs lesson in the future. So very, very important. So if those are our notes, again, like how we wrote them out, right? C, E, G, C, B, A, G. Okay. We have all the notes. Well, what are they in um, Phrygian? Well, the, my, the major 7th will go down to the minor 7th, and the major 6th will go down to minor 6th. Um, and the major 3rd will go down to minor 3rd. Oh yeah, I'm supposed to be playing in the chords too, ha! <laughs> You can do it just like that. It says patterns and patterns and shifting, shifting different patterns into other like, you know, containers. Does this square hole go into square hole? Does this circle go into circle hole? Um, I don't know, major my Yeah, the Dorian, Dorian, the Dorian mode is super interesting. Okay, so there's one more, I guess there's one more thing I wanted to do because it's almost three hours of lesson and it's the most, it's the most difficult, it's the most difficult, um, things we, uh, information we've had so far. It's the most difficult, um, content so far. Um, so, 
Oh, some of this is getting cut. Do you think I should post this on Twitter? It's a little nerdy, isn't it? It's a little embarrassing. <laughs> um, to see, like, everything kind of get compresses. So, like, Lydian, you compress that note to that, towards the lower. Everything gets flattened down. And then to get to minor, you flatten this down too, and everything gets sort of flattened down some more. This goes down, this goes down, you know. Everything's still C. Technically, all the differences between all the intervals are the same, but everything's sort of closer to home. And everything, and as you get closer to home, it gets a lot darker and more tense. Like, you know, you're driving back home after, after work, or you have to return back to reality and everything gets, you know, it's a lot different from your dream world. But as everything you break, get back down to earth, all the notes sound lower. Now the intervals between the notes are flatter. Um, post it with the bad pun. Yeah. <laughs> Imager here, I guess so. I mean, what? I guess... Do you guys think I should get, like, some Discord set up or something for my streams? I don't know. Discords are always wrought with peril and fraught with terror. Trying to get a friggin' Discord and everything. I don't know. I, I don't want to deal with that. Um, my band wants to play Paralyzer by Finger Eleven. I hit them with I Hardly Know Her. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. How's that song go? Oh, no, I won't. I don't want to trigger. Well, no, let's see. I'll try to learn whatever riff it is. Paralyzer. The finger level. I'll mute my desktop audio. Finger. Oh, it's this song. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Bam, 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 dun, dun, bam, bam. Okay, let's see if we can do that. E, obviously. Guitar songs are easy because they're almost always an E because it's the lowest note. It's really simple. It's going down this alien mode, technically. So we have the perfect fifth. This is obviously the chord. Obviously the root is E. Once you know the root, you kind of can figure out the whole song. It's going to have the perfect fifth in it, the B, because like almost all these songs do. So you already have two of the notes figured out. So it goes, the melody goes from the, the bum, bum, you know, you know. This is going to be, um... What is it going to be? It's a perfect fourth. It's a perfect fourth away from the from this E note. And this is going to be the minor third away from the E note. Because it's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. If it was a minor major third away from the from the E note, it would it would sound like this. change any song into any other mode you can change any song melody into any other any other scale and just like input the same mathematical formula basically and you can like do whatever you want with it like how about Lydian let's turn this melody into a Lydian very cool you can make a whole concept album off of this basically you have a dreamy song have a mix of Lydian Oh, you can't do mixolydian because you gotta have the seventh. I have it just taps it like this. Sounds like some happy blues song or a happy uh, classic rock song. Almost all classic rock songs are in mixolydian. We'll have a whole lesson on mixolydian, by the way. It's a major second. So like you can figure out a song just like like so just from these notes we have a major sec a major second a minor third a perfect fourth and a perfect fifth. So just from knowing, let's see, uh, look at our graph. So what we know it may, it's, it's a minor scale. It has to be a minor scale, and it's gonna have a major second, 
and a perfect fourth. So it could be Dorian. This is, let's see Dorian. Um, it could be this one because it has all our things. So it has a thing. It has the minor third and it has, a perf it has this and it has this. So technically it could be either of these scales. But because we don't know, we don't know what these notes are yet. We don't know, like, just from listening to the very beginning, we don't know what these notes are yet. So it could be either of these. We have that choice now. We have that mystery. There's a really, really cool song by um, Dosa Chiani called War. And it's basically just a riff like this. here where's the thirds there's you don't know anything almost just from these notes alone you only know this note that note that note and that note what the hell notes could that be um it could be this uh, you can any of these notes in between could almost be anything right so we do have our minor second so obviously it can't be the major second and we do have um, the perfect fifth and the minor sixth. We have two power chords basically going out. Well, what can it be? And then the melody does this. That almost also gives us almost no information. We know there's an A now though. So we know it's some kind of E chord and an F major chord because we have the A in there, we have the C, we have the F. All right, so we know it's an E major, E minor, or E something, and this. Well, it can be two things. Since we don't know the minor third or the major third interval yet, that hasn't been defined yet for us. So it can be, e, it can be anything. It can be either if we want to. So it could be. Can be this. It can be this kind of major sound or a minor sound. So the, the more gaps you have, I, I think I said this last last stream. Like the the less you define, the more you're free to like transform within it. Um, that's why I love doing like just chords like this. Like I'll just have a C. With the perfect fifth is there, so yeah, I do have to play these two notes in my improvisation, but everything else is up to me. And I could change it any time I want. Now I'm gonna play like the major third with it, sure. And with the minor six. And I'm gonna play the minor seventh as well. There we go. And now I'm gonna play the minor second. This one, minor seventh. And now I wanna play all the major intervals. Just cause I feel like it. And it's not getting in the way of any of these chords. If I was playing like the chord is playing this, then it's gonna be a little difficult to play this one all the time. Unless I'm playing some blue stuff. If it's playing like, you know, this kind of bluesy thing, it's a little harder to hang on this note in my improvisation because these two, the minors are, the minor sevenths are clashing. The minor six clash. The, these, the, all, the, almost all these notes clash. Um, these two notes clash. These two notes clash. Um, but like this note and that note don't clash. That note and that note don't clash, you know. Well, they do, but you know, like they don't sound like the same note if you're running them together too much. So for improvisations, I love just like fooling around like that, playing with that color in any kind of shape I want. That's why I like 
like in chord progression heavy songs. Like if you have that, like remembering Green Greens. That's every single note of the major scale lined out already. So playing outside those notes is going to be a little difficult. It'll require a lot of like thinking. Like. I can kind of like play around with the chords a bit. Maybe I can do some minor key like riffing like that. This is a super popular thing. Like, look at um, who remembers Super Mario Brothers? Uh, who remembers that classic retro niche game? you play the more notes you add the less the less freedom you have but the more definition you have and if definition is what you want then you'll have all the big like if you're writing a big you know concept album you want the big drama you gotta you know you gotta know what notes you want to use you gotta know all the notes you're gonna use if you want some contemplative contemplative stuff going on you're gonna want to leave a little things a few things open that's the difference between that's the difference for me between like um, Western harmony writing those are all very defined because you're playing so many different changes here that you kind of you have to know what notes you're gonna play you have to be a lot smarter. Like that sounded a bit off. Well, oh, it's like okay. I should have played the the augmented fourth with this chord, and then there we go. So you have to like know what you're playing. This is all I mean. This is what I mean by like knowing what you're playing. Um, because if you want to do some expansive stuff like that. If you want to go outside the chord, outside the scale, you're not, you know, these notes are not in the C major, right? If you want to go outside, you really better know what notes you're playing a lot, a lot harder. I can play this note here when I'm on the C, but when I change this note, I can't keep playing this note, the E note, because it would count as the, um, the minor six, basically. Or sharp fifth, the minor sixth note, basically, of of this chord, and I can't just do that. It sounds too, it sounds too sharp. It sounds too dissonant. It's not the sound I was going to go for. I wanted to go for a big drama sound. So if I am improvising like this, I have to be smart about what I'm playing. Like how about this chord? Well, I could probably still keep playing these notes. Okay, I'm safe. And then I can go back to playing this note when I'm back on here. So I need to be aware of the chord progression I'm playing. Like for in Green Greens. Now I can play C again, the major C because we were actually in C major for this section. Koji Kondo is a really good pianist. I mean, he's a very bad pianist, technically, but he's a very good um, composer, piano composer. He's basically, I think like of him as like, he's a composer, not like an instrumentalist. He can write music and he knows a lot about music and harmonies and very like classical kind of uh, per, um, ideas. Like again, this sort of thing. That's like an old piano kind of song. Oh, he probably is, yeah. But like, I remember that that one um live like show he did, and he's not like the best at piano. He's like kind of clumsy. He's a little like me. I guess I relate to Koji a little bit. Um. So, but he he has a lot of song ideas. Like, how about that one? Um. Oh God, I loved Super Mario Bros. Three. Christopher, how about I play that? Look.
Oh, see, look, look, it does this cool thing. Remember, I, I talked about it before. Minor, it goes to G minor. Remember, we're changing major third to the minor third. And the melody goes to the G. So it plays these two, these, this is the seventh and the E. Dun, dun. So the melody starts in E, the third, the major third of the C of the C major chord, and it just goes up. So major second, major third, uh, perfect fourth, and then to G to the high note G when we change the chord. It's so good. And then the major second to G, which always sounds really sweet and floating to me. So that's why it's it's going up. This is the highest note. This is the highest note the melody reaches in the whole thing. So it's really nice. And then it goes down along with the chord going down. So we're changing this note to that note. It's a... Technically, in this note, we're playing these two notes together too, because the B and the G are all playing. So we're playing, playing all these three notes. And we're playing the the third. It's so good. Um, I like that I have four ears. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought it would be a good thing. I kind of, like, I have my big headphones going on one ear and then, like, going on my head above my other ear just so I can hear myself. Like, better, better, better thing. I guess I should just do any, like, monitor, monitoring my headphones. I guess I should do that. It just hurts my ear so much. Um... So then the next melody goes over here. It goes... Da, da, da. What are these notes? This is the main minor, se minor seventh. And the major six. Minor seventh, major six. So these all sound good with it. Remember the, the blues kind of riff. Da, da. It's the same, like... The, if you do it over thing, it just sounds good. It's a good melody notes to choose because it just sounds very consonant. Opposite of dissonant, consonant. It just sounds very... And then it goes to C. Well, what is the next chord? It's an F. F major. So F, major third, not the minor third, major third. And then up to the perfect fifth. So it has to be an F major chord. And we're playing the major fifth along with the major chord. So it sounds strong and defined and big. It always sounds, uh, the major fifth, uh, I mean, the perfect fifth always sounds good with any chord that has a fifth in it. And then it does something, what is the next melody? Um, ah, see, it does the same thing, look. If we want to play the major second of the of the F of the F chord of the F chord, this would be the minor second. So this is the major second. So just like with the G, it did the. It is the same thing. So repeating the same melodic pattern. Dun. And it is the same thing. F major going down to F minor, that descending little in, small interval in, inside. It's so like imperceptive. It's so like elusive and like secret, but it's so like uh, the dampening of the mood. Soft, uh, dramatic, sort of like the, it's so the flattening of that like inner inner voice is so good. Think of like, like think of that like psychologically or something. Like you have your your two strong framing notes. And then the note in between is going lower or higher, happier, or sadder. Once it goes to here, you don't know what the thirds are anymore. It's only these no two notes can ever be the third, right? This note can never be the third for the F for the F chord. Minor second, major second, minor third, major third. Only these two notes can ever define a chord is major or minor. Even if every other, like we use every other minor interval like this, it could still be a major chord. We have this in. This is still a major chord. <laughs> so only these two notes define if a chord is major or minor. So it's a little annoying that they all use like major six, minor six, major six, minor six. Just think of minor is flat, major is sharp. Um, I should be ending the lesson 
pretty soon. <laughs> it's getting a little late. Um, what was I doing? Oh yeah, we're almost through this whole song. So we're at uh, the major third. Then we're not here. Doing the same thing. So this is a major seventh. If it was a minor seventh, it would be this note, right? They're a whole step apart from the root. This is a, a staff roll song of Super Mario Brothers 3. It is a beautiful song. It's the first song I ever loved as a little, little kid. It's the first song that made, first like piece of music that made me go, <gasps> music. What is this like feeling inside me? Like, oh. It, like zapped my brain, you know, like where all the other songs are, you know, kid songs, the little children's of Barney songs, that sort of thing. Like, obviously, I didn't, you know, you don't care about those songs. But this one was like, oh, there's like a, oh, my God, I couldn't understand what was happening. It was really this kind of energy happening. But you couldn't even tell, you couldn't really tell because it's just like video game music and it's like, oh, there's this magical like harmony going on inside. Um, so we're at this, okay, so we're at here. So we're technically playing the minor, major seventh with the minor chord. A very, very interesting harmony. It's not rarely used, but it is actually like, you know, it's there. People usually call it like, the mystery chord, like, ooh, suspense. Again, it's like, this definitely breaks the rules that you're not allowed to have these two notes together, but nobody, it doesn't break the rules. You just need to be using it properly and know what you're doing. So the fact that it's in a... And it's just in a passing tone. We call this passing tones and melodies. It's just passing along. It's not that, like, the two main tones would basically be this, this, and this, I guess. Like, da, 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 da. It's really like these two notes are saying, are, are, are a real, like, core of the melody. So it's very important to think about melodies like this, too. When you have a melody in your head, or you write a song, try to play the melody notes along with the chord. Like, do that. Like make it really tight with each other so you really hear what's going on is that a like a harmony Ooh, that's good what if your melody note like this is a song but it's good so you write it so you really know what's happening this is a floating note the major second this isn't the perfect fifth it's a good no, no, it's a good um, note to end on and feel like ah, uh, you've really like reached a climatic, climatic, climactic conclusion. So, so that's our little melody note, and it goes back to C. Oh, perfect! This would be a little, a nice little ending to our lesson because the next chord is really interesting. So the next chord, we think we're at home. Oh, that's the melody, but what the chord changes too. What what happens? What is going on there? So we think we're done. We think we're done, but no, it has some more. It has another secret. It has this chord. A D major chord. But it's supposed to be D minor. Right? Well, we've been breaking the rules technically the whole song with these extra, extra notes, right? So, we're going to do this too, D major. So it does this. So when we read to C, it does the major seventh, the root, and the major third. And the ma minor seventh always really sounds good with um, major chords. I love it. It's a sweet note, right? That's what I call it. So... Dun, 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 dun. So we're really lifting the whole chord, major chord, up two whole steps. So it's still a major chord up. Just like these two chords. It's 
we're doing the same thing with and the melody goes from the root to the major to the minor seventh. Remember the bluesy, the bluesy kind of note. And down to the major major six. Again, it's the bluesy. It's that bluesy kind of riff. So what do you call this chord again? It's a major key with the minor with a minor seventh. It's a dominant chord. We just invented the dominant chord out of nowhere, basically. We just invoked it out of nowhere. And what... If every dominant chord wants to go to another chord, what will, does it resolve to? This chord. Technically, this song would feel over. And so it does this whole thing. Uh, wait, wait, let me, let me replay it. sound over. The dominant chord is supposed to end the song. Because technically, this is also another dominant chord. We're doing a dominant chord into a dominant chord to then resolve it. So this, this resolves to this, resolves to this. So that's just a way to like extend the song duration. You can keep doing that over and over and over and over again. Like you can keep on going. Uh, what's the next one? I think this. Now, now I get a little lost. I'm not. I'm not great on my circle of fifths. But basically, dominant chords will always bring you. Then we're over. Okay, it's just a little extra tag. It's an extra little, uh, extra little uh, victory laugh, basically. So lots of blues songs are basically just. So blues songs are basically all dominant chords. Major keys with that minor seven spicy blues note. Um, and then we're back to home. Extra, extra notes. We just stuck to the white notes only. Let's see. Well, let's see how it sounds. Sounds, sounds pretty good. It's missing something though, right? So it's good that we add some of those extra notes, but it's very smart that w the way we did it. It was C. G to G minor to F to F minor to C to D major to G major. So it wasn't just like we broke the rules technically. We used all these extra notes and stuff, whatever. But we were smart about it. We knew what we were doing so we can 
write the right melody into it. We didn't like, if we want to harmonize that melody, because the melody is harmonized in the game, so it's like, well, we have to make sure we don't make any of those clashing notes. Like, then. See, I mess up at the end, but it's like, well, if you want to play, if you want to have different instruments playing together, you have to know what notes go with each other. So we'll talk about harmonies. How about last, next time? Okay, we'll talk about harmonization next time. Uh, how can you harmonize a single melody? Um, so, you know, you can write that song in like Phrygian too, if you want, or like, but it probably won't sound as good because only Ionian and Aeolian have that really cool strong resolution. The other ones are more unstable. They're all a little bit unstable, more or less. Think of it like unstable uh, isotopes. Unstable isotopes. They always want to lose an electron, gain an electron, turn into a different kind of um, different kind of atom, um, and turn into something else. So Ionian and Aeolian are the most stable, and they want to just, they're very comfortable. And they have the added bonus of being able to have the, the dominant chord, dominant chord, big tension reliever. They have that massager underneath their pillow that they like to use. Um, the other, the other, the other, the other, the other scales are a lot more tense. Okay, we did, we'll do have one more thing. I had that little dominant little, dominant to dominant to uh, chord, dominant to dominant to tonic chord progression as a little finale. But I have one more little, little trick up my sleeve. So, um, you see here, so Ionian we know is a whole step. I'll do a little arrows instead. So this is a whole step, whole step, half step. Whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Right? That's what we know. So, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Whole, 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 no. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. So, like, two, two, one, two, 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 one. And whatever, however way you do it, it's always that pattern of big, big, small, big, 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 small. Big, 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 small, big, 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 small. Um, think of like hopscotch. Hop, skip, jump. Hop, hop, skip. Hop, 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 skip. You know, jump, jump, nudge, jump, 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 nudge. However you do it, like big, big, small, big, 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 small. Okay, so how about Phrygian? Uh, we were playing Phrygian before. Or how about, um, yeah, let's do Phrygian. So we have... Uh, we just do the same thing. So half, okay, whole, okay, whole, okay, whole, all right, half. Oh, whole, whole, oh, that's our scale, okay. So whole, I mean half, half, whole, 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 half, whole, 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 so half, whole, 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 half, whole, whole. Does anyone, does anyone notice anything? So it's whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Half, whole, 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 half, whole, whole, half. It's, so whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. So it's the same pattern. It's always big, it's always a uh, two big, small, then Three big small. Two big small. Three big small. Even if you start at a different note, it's gonna be that. So half, whole, 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 half, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. 
it's always it's the same pattern. You just start at a different step of the hopscotch. So it's always going to be that same pattern. You just have to start at a different root note. Um, so if we have this, uh, if we have that, okay, it starts in the half. So we know that. That's where we get Phrygian. So where, what are the two halves we have in the C major? So it's either these two or these two. Everything else is a whole step difference. So, uh, so half, whole, whole, whole. Half, whole, whole, whole. Half, whole, whole. So in C major, we can get us E Phrygian, E Phrygian scale. E Phrygian. Half, whole, 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 half, whole, whole. That's, it's the exact same, technically it's the same, like, it's the same notes. We just have the same pattern of notes, it's starting on a different sort of shifting subject. So you can do, you can get scales either way. You can either get a C major and turn it to a C minor, C minor Phrygian, or you can get C major and get like an E, E Phrygian out of it, sort of thing. Like, um, there's so many different connections between all the different scales that are like based on simple little patterns. Like if you just memorize you know, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Um, or full tone, semitone, full, full, semi, full, 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 semi, and just decide, well, I'm gonna start on the six, the sixth one. Um, what is that? So, um, so on the sixth one, you're gonna like a uh, whole half, whole, half, whole, whole, half, whole, whole, whole half like it's just you know you just go up the same you just use that same pattern of like two big one small three big one small um and no matter what note you start at no matter what note you start at you start at you can construct any scale you want any chord you want any anything you want in any scale in any note it's that easy um a lot of guitarists are stuck in e the stuck in the e note all they really know are e scales and stuff because that's like the lowest instrument. And for a lot of music, like pianists, all they know is C because those are all the white notes. But technically all the notes are equal. All of them are the same if you just know the intervals and how they play. Like I know this is F major mixolydian because I'm playing the minor, the minor seventh of this F major, of this F uh, scale. And I'm playing the major third of it as well. Like it's that easy. It doesn't matter what note you start at. Whole, whole, half, whole, whole, half, whole. Like uh, for mixed loading, you use that, you know, use that pattern. So um, I guess that's all I had to talk about. This is, uh, I went way, probably way overboard. Um, I think I can add some more like extra skills onto this. Um, so Locrian, unfortunately, does not have a fifth. You see, there's no eight here. All of these have an eight. All these have the perfect fifth, but not Locrian. So you don't really get almost anything functional. You get some moodies kind of stuff, but it'll always feel wrong. But um, we'll explore each of these scales separately in their own lesson with a bunch of song examples I have of each one. And um, we'll be exploring, I think this Aeolian next, because it's again, just like Ionian, the main major scale, there's so much, there's so much music it can do compared to all the others. So Ionian and Aeolian are like the most, you can make the most music with them. That's why, you know, all classical music has, uh, you know, mostly just those two and the other, the, all the other like modes are kind of just like not as major, but you'll see all the scales have all have a little bit of um, everything in them. They all share from each other. They all borrow from each other. When I was playing, <laughs> even on a Phrygian sort of thing, when we're on this, this is technically the Lydian we're playing. Technically, it's all about mood setting. It's all about knowing the notes you're playing in relation to each other. Major seventh of your F. Minor seventh. Major six. Minor six. Perfect fifth. So try to learn at least all these different interval names. Uh, the minor second, major, uh, major second, minor third, major third. 
Perfect fourth. Uh, augmented fourth. Perfect fifth. Minor six, major six. Um, minor seventh, major seventh. So seventh, the thirds, um, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, and the root. So if you know that for like every note, based, based, starting on every note, you know like the relation, the um, like minor second, this is the minor second of the A flat, the major second of A flat. Like, you know, if you, if you're able to memorize at least just that, <laughs> um, you don't even need to memorize it. You just need to like, if once you hear it, like you can tell, like when I play this, like you can tell from everywhere, from the Jaws theme, like, -na 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 -na. like you can kind of just get a feeling of what each interval sounds like. So I guess for next lesson, I will be going a little deeper into intervals. We're getting more examples. I have a whole uh, demonstration, a little demonstration of how each interval can sound. I kind of want to do it now, but it's getting a little late. Um, unless people really, really want to hear my little demonstration of interval, 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 intervalality, intervality. Um, and, um, Next lesson. What else did I say we'll do next lesson? I already forgot. <laughs> I guess Aeolian or Dorian. Oh god, I want to cover all. We're going to cover all of them either way. There's so much to talk about for each one, and they're so wonderful. But uh, Ionian and Aeolian are probably the most expansive. They are like the biggest ones, and the rest are like expansion packs. <laughs> they have like their own little expansion packs, but they're not really the full game. They can't really play the full game um, like the major key and the Aeolian key can. Um, the Jaws theme used to be my jam when I was eight. Oh my god, wait, it's Renegade! Oh my god, wait, 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 oh my god, it's a old classic long-time stream follower. Oh my god, you're incredible. Hello, Renegade, how are things? How are things? Um, I'm really excited to mess with my keyboard again. Yeah, I hope you do, I hope you do. Bedweaves, bedweaves. Please have fun, like, just, I just love playing along, playing along like this. Um, started a random chord like this, right? Like, maybe this chord. I pretty much just keep my fingers in one position, and you can just, like, shift up and down, right? <laughs> and you can just play around with the white notes of each major, like, just do that. What do all these white notes sound like? Are there any interesting things happening like that? Oh, and then maybe do something else. Do... You can't change these chords too fast or you'll like lose the feeling, but like just play around with like. Ooh, you know. Fault. Yeah, it was years ago. Oh my god. See, when I do a trill like this, I'm thinking major seventh to the root. Major seven, uh, minor seventh to root. Minor seventh to root. And I'm thinking major second, like, major second, uh, like, lift. It's like, uh, like in the air.
Why does it sound so good? Why does it sound like you're uh, swimming, floating? Well, let's play these. What are all, what are on all these notes? The G major chord. We have the G major chord, but we're also playing the A, the floating major seventh. Everything here is just no, everything here is just a chord again. But then we go down to the F major chord. F major chord. And what what do we play? The same thing. That means we're playing the floating second here too. And now the major third. And we're also playing this this note. Playing the tritone, the augmented fourth. Basically playing a Lydian chord right now. That's why that dire dire dock sounds so. basically a mixolydian chord we're playing although i think in the in the song it sounds better if it's another if it's another major chord and then when we change the chords we're going to change this note completely we're just gonna go down that's how i like to play it usually so i go for a more major feel And then sometimes when I'm feeling adventurous, I like to do, I have to play the major seventh, the minor seventh instead. And have some more spicy adventure fun under the sea. I'm going to go to work. Enjoy the rest of your stream. Oh God, 25 viewers. This is the most viewers we've had. So guys, I was gonna have a little uh, mode demonstration. How about I, do? I'm just gonna do it. Try to pay attention to this note and ask me how you feel. Yeah, mini mode demonstration. This is a build up of uh, intervals demonstration, really. This is about intervals. I'm not going to change how I play it. I'm just going to focus on the harmony. How can a single note sound so different that's based on the other notes around it in the same harmony? This is the, basically you're playing the mi major seventh of a D flat chord. going to change. Major seventh, a minor seventh of a D chord, D major chord. A minor seventh of a D minor chord. And now we're going to play I think it's a major, major, major six of the E, e flat. Well, a little, a little, a little off, a little off. It's a minor six of a E minor chord. Ooh, a minor six of an E major chord. And all this um, aug like, um, augmented fifth, some people call it. And now we're going to play the F. The strengthening fifth chord. It's fifth note. Note, 
hasn't changed. All we've been saying is this the whole time. But just the notes, other notes in the, in the scale, in the chord you're playing, can change it so much. So this is the F major. Hasn't changed too much, because the fifth is very, very stable. The fifth is so stable, it doesn't really care. But we're going to play F, F sharp now, F sharp major. Augmented four. minor, F sharp minor. F sharp major again, because this is a Lydian basically. Augmented for it. Now we're going to play G. It's very tense. The, my, the perfect fourth in a major chord is very tense. It wants to go down to here, but it won't. We're stuck here. And now we're going to play the minor, G minor. Sounds a little nicer. There's a little less, there's a little more room for it to breathe. It doesn't have this B note right next to it, right? So it doesn't have a B note nagging in its ear that it's, that it's uh, in, in, it, in its car seat. So it has a little more room. With these two, with the whole note in between. So think about that too when you're writing melodies. And now we're gonna play A flat major. It's a major third of the A flat note. Oh, we're playing the the major third on top of a major a minor third. Bluesy. Now we're playing the minor third in a major chord. So again, the same, same, basically the same energy. Um, now we're gonna play the a minor chord. Ah. Uh, now we're playing a minor third of an a, a minor chord. Well, I'm, we're almost done. We're almost done, guys. Almost a few, two more, two more notes. Now we're going into B flat, B flat major. Ah. We're in the floating major second note. First time chatter. Hello, 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 hello. Now we're going to play B flat minor. Pretty nice. Now we're gonna play our final two notes. B major chord. Ooh, spicy. Now we're gonna play B minor. Ah, Phrygian, Phrygian energy. Minor third with the flat with the minor second. And now, we're gonna play right back home. Now we're at the root, now it's the root note. So the single note played for what, five minutes, completely transformed how kind of energy it had. completely change personalities, can change the mood. A single note can have 12 different possibilities, 24 different possibilities, 30, 40, 50 different possibilities of a single note. So imagine if a single note can change that much based on what chords are happening underneath it and what other notes are being played. Imagine if you have a whole song's worth of melodies. 
single one of those notes can have a, a, dozens of different personalities and characters based on whatever other chords you want to play underneath it or any other notes you just want to play with it. That's all up to you. Even if it's just 12 measly little notes you have to play with, you have infinite combinations of moods and blends and feelings you can evoke if you know what you're playing. If you know that, like, it's in my major second minor, if you at least are familiar with it, even without names, you don't need to know the names of the of whatever. You just need to experiment, play around, see how they sound like with each other. I love that. I love that minor. I love that minor seventh. Um, so anyways, that's, uh, I just, you can just play like that. There's so much more to go into with music, but I think if you understand the power of one note, the power of a single note, then imagine a song like with a hundred different melody notes and they all have their own color they can add. So even when you're singing a melody, think about like, think about, um, Major seventh to the fifth. This is a minor seventh to the third, minor third. Think about think about that. What what feelings does the minor minor major uh, the major seventh evoke in a song? And the fifth is a powerful kind of note. Think about that. And I think you'll be a little more um, interested in how you can write music without words. You don't need the words. You don't need words to, um, to give a note meaning. You don't need to give this, make this note say love. If it feels like love. Or loss, what can it mean? It's up to you. If you paint with your sounds. the bunny back in the box. Interesting. Anyways, so I hope that was a nice little demonstration. I hope anyone here who has instruments picks, picks up their little guitar. You can just do a good guitar. I like playing a low E note on guitar and just noodling. And think about how each note can tell a story and have a personality and life to it just in a single note um so anyways thank you so much bed weaves especially you've been wonderful um i read this one guitarist who made the lil wayne exercise where you challenge yourself to make something musical emotional which is playing a and b yeah it's that sort of thing too most people play with rhythm too we haven't played ri with rhythm at all i haven't even talked about Like that whole middle section is a da 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 da. So that's another motif, another element of motif. So a single note is not even just the music; it's the rhythm with which you play it. So imagine what that can say along with it. It's like think of EXIF data in a single photograph. You have so much information in a single single photo, a single picture that hopefully you clear before you upload it to the internet. Um, and it has all this information packed into it. And you are the director, you're the composer. That's a compo composition. It's like directing or screenwriting in a film for a film or you're a novelist. Um, you are the composer of that note and you can evoke whatever emotion you can, you're skilled enough to evoke in the listener's ear, like you are a director. You can make that curtain, that blue curtain, mean anything you want. It's 
If you have, if you have the know-how and you have the will, if you have the director's passion. <laughs> so think of um, all the different ways, uh, even a simple song can evoke, evoke uh, emotions and power. So uh, next time we will be looking at a different scale. Bunny, bunny, bunny. We did a different scale, probably Aeolian. Uh, looking at a few different ideas and re and like re um, reiterating everything I've already gone on to in this lesson. So it's a nice three and a half hour, three and a half hour lesson. So we will be uh, rating someone now. Let's rate. Let's rate. Let's rate. Does everyone have a rating um, idea? God, I'm like um, leaning over my leaning over my desk so badly right now. Um, come on, come on. Ba -ba -ba. Twitch video producer. There we go. Stream manager. So I just like, you know, just playing music with like, I don't know, yes songs, old yes songs, just a Chiani music, instrumental, lots of instrumental music. This made me focus on like the notes a lot more and why those, why certain notes were so much more like evocative than others and that just made me like you know want to learn about the actual power of each note specifically and i think writing with words like it's actually hard for me to write without lyrics because i kind of just think of that as another kind of dimension of words of like painting painting with uh sounds that i can do so i like writing with words too but i think a song I want to be able to hum it in my head, even without remembering the lyrics, because I can't remember most lyrics of most songs I even like a lot. It takes me a while. Usually, like, it takes me a few listens to go, okay, what are the lyrics to this? Let me really, like, memorize it. <laughs> I remember the Close to the Edge. I had no idea what the fuck the songs were saying. Or, like, almost any Mars Volta song. But, like, I love the melodies a lot, and I love the sounds of the words, you know, and how... And now when I listen and know the story, it's like, oh, my God, it's, like, so powerful when he sings, you know, who brought me here at the end. It's like, oh, that's so good. You know, that sort of thing. Um, so think about combining the two as well. Like they shouldn't be frivolous. Your words should match the, the energy of the notes themselves, of what the notes themselves are saying, you know? Like this note. writing songs for this melody, this Kirby melody. I would want something that sounds uh, I want something that sounds sort of evocative of these particular notes that they're coloring me with. And my like perspective of like certain notes as this being like a sweet note doesn't have to be true of course. Like you can have a totally different opinion on it and write based on that. And like it's your job as like a director of music to sell me on that, right? To really like work me over and like literally go like, yeah, yeah, that's what it means. You you convinced me, you know? Um, um, so like, um, that's how I think. Even if I'm writing like a pop song, like I want it to evoke a certain mood. So anyways, I'm hoping I finally fixed notifications so I could arrive at the beginning of the stream for months. Children of Infinite Hell. Oh, hello again. I'm so glad to see like repeat viewers. I'm so glad because I am like planning like whenever I'm thinking about lessons, I'm thinking of building on the next one and the next one and the next one. So all these things I'm like kind of teaching you now so I can talk about more deeper things later. So this is like the basics almost. <laughs> Although this is sort of stuff like um, I never see like almost any guitarist talking about really. Um, very rarely. Usually like advanced guitarists. So that's why like I really love like see Vi and stuff. He really like knows and Tetriani like plays with modes all the time. It's like, oh yeah, they, they know what they're fucking talking about. They're not playing just like here's a pentatonic shredding riff, you know, that sort of thing. Um, it was a nice stream. Thank you for a wonderful stream. That's beautiful. Great class. Thank you. 
This is so amazing. I've never, I've always had these thoughts running through my head over and over. Sometimes I just think to myself for hours thinking about all my music ideas. Um, and I have songs too. I do have, I've been streaming instead of working on my freaking album ideas. So I really, I'll be doing that. I'll be trying to do that more. Um, hoping I can finally, okay. Um, have trouble even understanding English. Yeah, I know. I mean, think of like everyone around the world listening to music they don't even understand the words to, you know? So words are definitely like super important, I think, just like texture or sound, like a guitar tone is important. Um, and obviously the it's like in an opera, you can't just erase all the words, right? Like the words are important, but like the music is as well, right? Um, it should be more important. I really hate concept albums that don't have any musical connections at all. They're only just all the songs are completely different and completely unconnected, but the the lyrics are telling a story. It's like, well, just write just write some poetry then, you know? Um, do some extra work to tell a music to tell the story alongside the words. I don't think enough musicians are really doing that. And that's why like Undertale is still so beloved, the friggin' soundtrack. It's because it was like, oh, it's telling a story with the game along with the melodies. And the music, that's what a soundtrack should be. Like, that's, like, obviously the, the, it should be the, what do you call it? It should be the bare minimum. It should be, like, the standard of what, of what soundtracks are, you know? Or concept albums and stuff. Even single songs. Even a single five-minute song should be able to think about this sort of stuff, too, I think. From section to section. Um... Does anyone have any uh, streams that they want to raid? Any requests? Raid requests? Um, I'll see if there's someone who... Yeah, I don't really know these people who are streaming right now. So anyone, who, any ideas? Any ideas? Because guitarists are dumb. As long as it affects how you hear things. a lot about that like rocksmith stuff i was thinking like if a guitar can pick up the tuning then i can just play a note and it'll play the tuning right but it won't be able to pick up chords like if i play an eb an e and a b note it won't be able to pick up both of those notes it'll get messed up it won't be able to tell me i'm playing three different notes here it'll just be able to tell me one note at a time which is kind of it's kind of useless so i think i think i'm not going to be using um I'm not going to be doing that anymore. Um, I'll try to stick with... Um, I'll try to stick with my piano for teaching. And the Cordy app was kind of crappy too. Yeah, if anyone has any, any, any um, rating requests, again, I'll raid whoever. Pick up a chord, but I can't know where your fingers are. Yeah, well, no, that's fine. It doesn't show a shape. I don't care about the shape. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. If it just tells me the chord I'm playing, that would be pretty cool. I looked into Rocksmith and I don't think I saw anything that tells me like the notes you're playing.
That was Moon Safari by Lover's End Part 3 by Moon Safari. Everyone listen to Moon Safari. Blamel Jude and Lover's, Lover's End. Their second and third albums. I think it's some of the best. And the EP song, Lover's End Part 3. Keep jamming, man. Glad your band is streaming. No, it's supposed to be ending now. I just keep getting stuck in playing. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes! Moon Safari. Blamel Jude. Lover's End. Plus EP. They also have two other albums, although they're like not as good, but they're still really good. If you like if you like one of them, you're gonna wanna listen to all of them anyway, so <laughs> stay. Piano piece that would be epic for you to, okay, save it for next time. Yes, yes. Or maybe just uh, link it and I'll try to practice for next time or something. So anyways, I guess nobody has any, oh, 27 viewers. We have more viewers than we used to when we had the whole stream. I always want to try to finish a stream with rating. Just because it's like a way to give back to the community. <laughs>
Yeah, sure, Aqua. Yeah, sure, go.
Okay. I'll be doing, um... Who shall I be raiding? Um... Oh god, 444 views. Oh my god. Um... 48. I have to watch your freaking ad. Guys, yeah, should I turn on ad breaks for like fractions of a cent? Oh, this guy's playing music. Okay. We'll be doing bed weeps. Um. Randy Lady Man. <sighs> so, guys, next time we will be doing a bunch of stuff, whatever I can remember. <laughs> We were just re re going over everything again. So everyone is on the same page. Because I want everyone to learn all music. So guys. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all. Bam, bam, ba -da -dum, ba -dum. Only 40 minutes after you say stream is ending. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thank you for the stream, it was so lovely. First time chatter, first time chatter. Hello, comment TK. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to share everything I know about music to everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's rate, let's rate. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye. I'm so tired. I gotta, I gotta eat dinner, guys. I didn't eat dinner yet. It's 10 o'clock. <laughs>